A house divided. While Aquinas builds its new athletic complex, the Irish share a stadium with Greenbrier. And tonight, they fight for the field. Well, you know what? I, I know exactly how excited Coach Leonard is and, and, and their program to get a new stadium, a new field. Um, you know, it's uh, the football transcends what happens out here on the field. Um, you know, we're, all our coaches, we have, you know, common things that we face uh, day in, day out. And, um, you know, I would like to think that Aquinas would do the same thing for us um, if we were in their situation and needing a place to play. But, uh, you know, we're happy to help. Coach Black and um, Mr. Fulmer over at Greenbrier are treating us really, really well. Um, so, you know, of course, they'll be the home team tomorrow. Um, but next week, we're using their field to host our region game in Lincoln County. And then later on in October, we'll host our other region game with Green County there. So, can't say enough about the people at Greenbrier taking, good, good, uh, taking such good care of us. The Irish and the Pack in a turf war. Welcome to Game Night Live. WJBF Sports presents local high school football live in your living room each Friday night. Game Night Live is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And now, your hosts, John Hart and Ashley Brown. The first official Friday night of fall, September 22nd. And Game Night Live brings us to the Briar Patch, where the Greenbrier Wolfpack will host the Aquinas Fighting Irish. Greenbrier comes in 0-4, Aquinas 3-1. John Hart joined once again by Ashley Brown. Our statistician Nathan Edwards will join us momentarily, and Kira Goldstein down on the field. A.B., uh, yes, Aquinas comes in no, ranked number 10 in the state in Class A. But these are two teams, I think, that could use something good to happen. Aquinas has suffered through some debilitating injuries, and, of course, Greenbrier has lost 16 straight coming in. Well, uh, injuries that most teams in the entire state wouldn't be able to deal with. Aquinas lost maybe the best all-around player in the area in Clark Jackson, a beast on uh, defense and offense, and, uh, you know, that was earlier in the year with a knee injury. And then last game, the leading tackler for, the, for Aquinas and one of the best defensive players in the area, Wes Michelson, goes down with a broken arm. So just you feel terrible for Coach Leonard. But look, they're three and one. They're off to a pretty good start. They've got their region slate coming up. And like you said, for Greenbrier, it's been a long time for the Wolfpack. And it's been heartbreaking losses. Uh, they nearly beat Evans. They nearly beat Lakeside. They're going to break through eventually. And of course, they're hoping it's going to be tonight. Well, you see right there, uh, or you did on your screen, number one uh, for Aquinas, Clark Jackson, who AB referenced, who is. Uh, uh, out for the season, one of the best players in the CSRA. So we'll see how it plays out, and that brings us to our Ford keys to the game. Yeah, I guess let's start uh, with Aquinas. Uh, they've got a gang tackle tonight. They don't have their two studs on defense, Clark Jackson and, uh, and of course, Wes Michelson. So gang tackle, and the young guys are going to have to step up for the, those injured. And then I think they've got to win the battle up front. Aquinas has always been known for their offensive line. I don't know if this year's group is as good as in the past. They've got to step up. For Greenbrier, get pressure on Jim Franklin. Do not give him time to throw the football. He'll pick you apart. And I think they need to control the clock with running the ball and short passing. Down to the field for the coin toss. Gentlemen, you've been chosen to capture your teams. Can you control your team? Y'all don't sound like y'all mean it. Can y'all control y'all teams? Good. If y'all can't control them, we will. Know how? Start throwing flags. I'll send them out to the parking lot. All right? It's going to be 22 out here running around. Eight but six of us fish aid. Y'all already know. Y'all run faster than we do. So we can do the best we can, all right? Make y'all a promise today. I will not throw any touchdown passes. Y'all can't throw no flags. Fair enough? Oh, y'all the home team, y'all the business, y'all get to call it. Got a coin, got a heads. And a tails. What is your call, sir? Tails. Tails. It is a heads. You have won the toss. You have the option to kick the ball, receive the ball, defend the goal, or defer your choice to the second half. Defer the second half. Y'all want the rock, right? Which way y'all gonna kick it? Put y'all back in this way, gentlemen. You good right there? All right, gentlemen, shake hands. Go get your team.
Dominic Eubanks, our referee tonight. So Greenbrier wins the toss to first. Aquinas will receive the opening kickoff as the Wolfpack prepare to take the field. That brings us to our coaches matchup, A.B. Yeah, we we'll first start with James Leonard. 90 wins and 33 losses. He's in his 11th season. His very first year, he led him to a state championship 14-0 in 2013. They won four region titles, and he is a former player and graduate at Aquinas, so he lives and breathes Irish football. For Greenbrier, Tony Kramer, 30-57 and 57 in his ninth season. They do have three playoff appearances. He was a defensive coordinator back in the day at Evans from 2012 to 14, and he also spent 10 years of matriculating through as a coach at the middle school level where he was a head coach at Columbia Middle. The Irish have taken the field. The Wolfpack are on the field. Kickoff is next on Game Night Live. Welcome back to Game Night Live, where we are seconds away from the quick kickoff of Aquinas versus Greenbrier. I got a chance to talk to both coaches this week about some of the keys to the game. And when I talked to Coach Leonard from Aquinas, he said, this is a season of adjustments. He said, I don't think anybody's ever ready to lose two of your star players, but that his team has been great, his coaches have been great, and that this season is all about growing through those adjustments and working together as a team. Guys, I'm going to send it up to you in the booth, and then we'll get started down here on the field. Yeah, Kira, thanks. And A.B. alluded that to that in our opening segment. Clark Jackson, Wes Michelson, both gone off of this Aquinas roster as the Irish prepare to receive the opening kickoff. And away we go. And a touchback. First game we've done here with the new turf field at it, Greenbrier. It is, yeah. I was thinking that during the pre -game, uh, before the game started. Yeah, first time. It looks great. And uh, should be good tonight. Homecoming for Greenbrier. Packed house on their side. You see, <laughs> the, if, if we pan over, you'll see the fog in the, where the student section is. All the baby powder that they threw into the air as the game started. Yeah, your, your daughter leave the house with 20 things of baby powder? No, she had a bunch of glow necklaces, though, that she's very excited about. So she'll have those on. She's in there somewhere. All of these Columbia County schools bring it with the student sections. And Greenbrier is no exception. Well, we'll get a chance with this Aquinas offense to see what I think is the best passing quarterback probably in the CSRA. Quan Edwards at Strom Thurmond may beg to differ, but Jim Franklin is a good one. And on first down, he does throw for a first down up to the 31-yard line. And I believe that was Buddy Rowe Guerrero. And it was – actually, that was Zaire Douglas, who, by the way, got his first college offer this past week. Congratulations to him. Uh, what, what, what Aquinas does have, they missed the big, strong Clark Jackson, and but they do have a lot of small, quick, fast, you know, players like Zaire Douglas is one of them and Buddy Rowe Guerrero is another. It's like a Mike Bobo offense. Little, yeah. little swing passes out to the left. They're working a little better. And that's going to be about a yard shy. I mean, an inch shy, actually. So, Franklin – 700 yards passing, eight touchdowns. He has a rushing touchdown to add to that. Well, the most impressive stat, though, John, he's 68 for 99, 69% completion percentage at the high school level. That is very solid. And, you know, he's coming off a game where he threw for 300 yards and four touchdowns and ran two touchdowns in the loss to Harlem. Did give him the first down, and now Franklin will run. And another big gain and another first down into Greenbrier territory at the 46-yard line. Now, that's interesting. That's not really his M.O. He's not known for that at all. And I don't know what was going there. A Greenbrier player got in his face at the end of the play. But that's not what he's known for. Even last week when he ran two touchdowns, he only had 16 yards rushing. Um, but he is known more for slinging it back there. Can really throw the football again. Last week, over 300 yards and four touchdowns in that loss. It was a quarterback duel. He and Ethan... Evangelista from Harlem really went at it last week. Yeah, we saw Evangelista a few weeks ago on Game Night Live. We know what he is capable of. And this is Cates, Christian Cates on the carry, and he is dragged down by Grayson Collett. Well, that's a terrific play there by Grayson Collette. And, you know, his older brother was a heck of a player here. And, mm -hmm. You know, Collette with a big play there. That one thing Greenbrier has always had, even in their struggling years, they've always had a feisty defense that would keep them in some games. And that's what they've done this year. You know, they lost to Lakeside 14 to 10. They had Evans beat. And somehow Evans came back and was able to beat them. You know, they, they, they've played tough this year. They just haven't been able to break through and get that first win. 
whereas Aquinas could easily be 4-0. Their only loss of 47 to 42 defeat at the hands of Harlem, and they beat a very good Savannah Country Day team as well. Oh, in and out of the hands. I believe that was Jack Rhodes. He's the backup quarterback. He's only a sophomore, and last year, boy, did he step in when Jim Franklin went down with an injury because this is the second year in a row the injury bug has really hit uh, Aquinas. Last year they lost both Franklin and Clark Jackson uh, to injury, but Jack Rhodes, that young man right there, number 10, stepped in and played great at quarterback as a freshman. Now he's one of the top receivers on the team. So this is a big play for Greenbrier. This is a drive for Aquinas that started out with such promise, but now third and 15. Uh, you got to get off the field on third down. We saw it last night in the NFL game where the Giants just couldn't get off the field on third down. And now Frank Franklin. Frank chased. He'll have it. First down at the 36-yard line. I say that especially in the NFL, but it really trickles down, John. If you can't, especially against passing, if you can't rush the passer, and you can't get off the field and, and hold third down conversions, especially when you put them in third, seven, third, and eight. There it was third and 15. You're not going to win football games. You're not going to be successful. You've got to figure out a way to make a play on those third downs to get off the field as many times as you can, and you've got to pressure a guy like Franklin. If you let him sit back there, he is going to pick you apart. Fresh set of downs at the 36. Short gain on first down. All right, you ready for my stat of the night? That's a little dated now that we're almost halfway through this drive. Yeah. But coming into this game, you want to talk about a balanced offense, which is what every coach wants. How about this? Coming into tonight, Aquinas had thrown it 102 times and run it 102 times. You know, I, I would venture to guess there's no other team in the area with that type of balance. Maybe Strom Thurmond. They probably even throw it more than they run it. Now, that tackle, by the way, was Chris Chappell. He comes into the game averaging almost 13 tackles a game for Greenbrier, definitely their leader. Going to bring up third and about seven. Third and nine. And again, another big third down for this Wolfpack defense as they try to get this high-powered Irish offense off the field. Yeah, they come in averaging 31 points a game, while Greenbrier only averages about 16 and a half. So, yeah, they've got to they've got to try and play ball control and play good defense. But that time they're offsides defensively. So it'll be we third and about three now. Yeah, Roy Fitzgerald, the young sophomore, not happy with himself there. Got a little anxious. Third and three or up, uh, well, closer to four, is you probably got two downs to get this now. Well, I think the real key for Aquinas, they've got specialty players, even with the injuries. The key is up front. If they're going to do well in their region, those guys up front are going to have to do the trick, give Franklin time to throw, and also open lanes for Christian Cates running the football. On third and three. First down and out of bounds at the 22 and down to Kira Goldstein for the first time on the sidelines. Yeah, guys, I got a chance to talk to Coach Leonard about Aquinas' line, and you mentioned how vital that line is. It's actually a line that has no seniors on it. It has one freshman and all juniors. It's led by Will Parrish, and he said that those guys have really had to step up and step into some responsibility this year, but he's so proud of how they are doing out there tonight, guys. Back up to you. Kira, thanks. You're gonna have to, she's going to have to introduce, her, uh, introduce us to I was going to say, she's met a friend point. already on the <laughs> sidelines. <laughs> down here, guys. We're hanging out. <laughs> on first down, incomplete. That might be a live football. Yeah, that was very close. It, that was I, really was, close. I think it was forward. It was forward. Nolan Panzella, number seven for Greenbrier, is the player that ended up with the football. His brother, Aiden, was a great player here a few years back. You see – Whoa. Oh, yeah, maybe it yeah. was. That was really close, though. The issue was is the, the line judge did not yeah. immediately tell whether it was a forward or backwards pass, and nobody knew. The dulcet tones of Nathan Edwards, our statistician, who you'll hear from throughout the night here. Who's the birthday boy? Happy birthday, Nathan. That's right. Yeah, appreciate we'll, that. <laughs> we, we, we'll probably have time to sing happy birthday at, uh, at halftime. Nice. <laughs> Well, in the back of Aquinas up here. Aquinas, yeah. Flag down. There's a look at that student section. Yeah, I know you like to go to a lot of concerts now, but I don't know if your singing is the best. <laughs> we might find out. <laughs> nah, we'll tell you it's not. 
Well, little known fact about me, I did make all state chorus in Whoa. seventh grade. Whoa. Yes. So now I did not know that. Maybe there. we yeah. do well, want to hear yeah. it. Sing away to me. Things have changed since my voice changed. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> second and 14. Oh. 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 Early nominee for hit of the game, yeah, but what a catch. Early nominee for our Georgia Health Department hit of the game, but what a grab by Buddy Rowe Guerrero, who's the team's leading receiver with 24 catches and a touchdown already this season. Last week he had 12 catches for 194 and two scores, and he's also maybe got the best name in the area, Buddy yes. Rowe. I Buddy Rowe. And he's he, on the all-name team to be sure. He can fly. He's, already, he's only a junior. He's already been offered by Marshall. And I think more offers are going to come. He can, he's probably going to be a corner in college. But I tell you what, he's looking good at receiver right now. You know, they lost Kevin Douglas. He graduated all area receiver. And Jack Rhodes and Buddy Rhodes Rhodes are kind of their two go-to guys now. Well, Ooh. they were inside the Murphy Auto Group red zone. They still will be, but they're going to have to back up a little bit. What a hit, though, by I think was it Demarcus Hurd that got him, number eight? Man, big hit. How much confidence do you have as a quarterback, though, that you can throw a guy a ball at that and he'll take a hit and yeah. hold on? Especially at the high school level. I mean, and Buddy Rowe is not a big guy. First and 15. Oh, That's another drop. That's a couple now tonight. It's going to give James Leonard headaches. That was Michael Quiller. Now, this kid, remember that name. He's a freshman. He starts at defensive back. He comes in some on offense. He is going to be a big-time player here. Super quick, super athletic, very confident that he can handle his side of the field at cover corner. Uh, again, Makai Quiller, remember that name. Second and 15 from the 17. They can get a first down without a touchdown. I mentioned him being a really good freshman. We well, haven't even talked about yeah. the best freshman. We'll talk about him when Aquinas is on defense. Oh, they got a oh, and they little won. miscommunication on the Aquinas side. Yeah, Cates wasn't looking back, and Franklin threw it to him. So third and 15. Well, they had a third and 15 earlier, and they let Franklin scramble for the first down. Here they, they've got to get off the field. They can get a first down without scoring, but, man, you've got to get a stop here, force them to kick a field goal if you're Greenbrier. Well, they're eating up clock, too. They've had the ball almost, almost half the quarter already. They have driven it some 60 yards. And what a defensive play. Great job by Ryan Claiborne, who has an interception to his credit already this year and breaks up what would have been a scoring pass for Aquinas. Yeah, it looked like Buddy Rowe Guerrero was going to get the touchdown. It was a beautiful throw by Franklin. Let me look here. It's, it looked like, oh, yeah, good play. He got the arm, pulled the right arm down, and he got there right after the ball. So good play defensively by Claiborne. 34-yard field goal attempt by the Irish. That was a big stop. Jack Rhodes. Wide receiver also doubles as the kicker. It's supposed to be a windy night, but it's pretty – not a whole lot out there right now. No good. So, wow. As you said, A.B., you burn up half the quarter, come up empty. Greenbrier takes over after this. Well, Heart & Hustle Printing is your go-to destination for all your custom apparel needs. Located conveniently on Washington Road in Evans, what sets us apart, everything. they done right here in shop so you can skip the middleman and get top quality service directly from Heart & Hustle Printing. The dedicated team is committed to working closely with you to bring your vision to reality. At Heart & Hustle Printing, they specialize in a wide range of custom options, including uh, custom screen printing, embroidery, banners and stickers, heat transfer vinyl, uh, also T-shirt and Richardson uh, hat blanks, and direct-to-film printing. So when it comes to your next uh, custom apparel order, look no further than Heart & Hustle Printing. And uh, thank you for choosing Heart & Hustle Printing. Keep pressing. Vernon Guyton on the... Carry for Greenbrier on first down. He's their leading rusher. And picked up a short gain and now flags fly. Yeah, movement on both sides. I think they might have got a quantity. On sides. On defense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. It was number 46, Lucas Inman. He is also a freshman. Again, Aquinas plays a lot of young guys. His crew. 
And that's a good region they're in when they start region play. They've got Lincoln County, I think he said, next week. And you know, you've got Washington Wilkes in that region. Warren County, some good teams in there. Yeah, both of these teams start region play a week from now. And again, a good stuff by this Aquinas defense. Yeah, swarming defense there. That was Frank Anderson, the senior linebacker. I'm ready. I'm ready. So this Greenbrier defense sort of bent but didn't break on that long drive by Aquinas. And now Aquinas possibly a down away from getting the football back. Yeah, they had it. Like you said, Greenbrier's only had the ball for about a minute and a half. They would love to get a first down here and extend this drive. Third and six. Complete first down. That was Buddy Rowe Guerrero on the hit. He took one and delivered one. He took a hit earlier, and, yeah, he paid him back right there, but it is a first down with the forward progress. You know, Greenbrier said they're pretty happy with the play of their quarterback, Braden Stevens. He's a young one. He, only a 10th grader, and they think he's just getting better and better. But, yeah, perfect hit there time by Guerrero. Yeah, he's thrown for more than 500 yards in their first. Four touchdown passes, but also the, the, the interception has been a bugaboo for him. Yeah. Four picks as well. Yeah, four picks. And you just, again, protect the football. And on the flip side, you know, uh, Jim Franklin, eight touchdowns and just one interception. This one's over before it started. So this is what they do. They'll bring in Cole All Trump. Side. On defense. Who's also a Side sophomore. Penalty. We he's kind of down. their running quarterback. And he's a big kid. His brother is a freshman baseball player at Georgia Southern that played here at Greenbrier. And Cole there is number 22. He's a big kid. He's only a 10th grader. Well, folks, right now at McDonald's, you can get any size of your favorite frozen drink, like the new Hawaiian frozen punch, or any size McCafe iced coffee. And it's only $1.89. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Nathan, did you stop at McDonald's in Washington on the way to Athens last uh, weekend for the Georgia-South Carolina game as Greenbrier is close to another first down at the 43-yard line? I did not. I was told John had already gone through there and bought everything. I was running a little bit late, getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Is it difficult? So I've had to bypass. But uh, well, it was Joshua Banks on the carry for Greenbrier there, number three. So big gain on first down, second and three. After the penalty, gave them the first and five. It's now second and two. And a quarterback keeper for a first down. Close yeah. to midfield. Well, that's a really good job up front by that Greenbrier offensive line. Cole Trupp, nothing fancy, just got the direct snap, took it to the left, and he was able to pick up the first down easily and then some. And he doesn't throw it much when he's in there. I think he's only attempted seven passes all year, but he does run the football. <laughs> Is that also on the list for all name team? Cole Truck? Well, Trupp. Trupp. T U P P. Or T R U P P. Trupp. Well, that's a shame. If it was Cole Truck, <laughs> yes. He'd be a country <laughs> singer already, John. <laughs> <laughs> on the offense, five yard penalty. Replay the down. Yeah, both teams starting to. Rack up some penalties, a little sloppy here in the early going, and it's all that those sloppy penalties, offsides, false starts, and you got to clean that stuff up. So it'll be first and 15. And this is not an offense that is built for that. You know, they, they, they're not a high-powered offense. We mentioned averaging 16 and a half points a game. Last week they managed only 10 against Lakeside. They kept Lakeside down too, though, only lost that game 14 to 10. But Put yourself these first and 15s is not ideal. That's Trump. Big game. Close to another first down. Yeah, just when I said that, Trump gets about 12 or 13. I think they're going to mark him down a little earlier, though, so maybe 11. So they're going to mark him about four yards shy. So it's going to be second and four. But they're into Aquinas territory at the 47-yard line. Joshua Banks, number three for Greenbrier, limping off after that play. Yeah, Banks, who just carried the ball a little bit earlier. So in the backfield now for Greenbrier's number four. That's Nate Ames. He's the starter. He's also one of the leading receivers as well. On the keeper. 
a yard shot. Well, you know, Aquinas did a great job that time in getting in the backfield and hitting Trump, but he's still able to push his way forward and pick up nice yardage there. We don't have a 50 on our roster, unfortunately. We'll try to get that for you at halftime. But uh, he made a nice play, but he hit Trump at the line of scrimmage, and Trump still carried him for a few yards. Very similar to what we've seen a couple of times this year with Laney. They're going to put yeah. their athlete in the, with the ball, and they're going to run power QB, and they're going to dare you to stop it. Yeah, I, talk, I had uh, Corey Evans, the head coach at Grovetown, on last night, and I talked about that. Nothing fancy. You pull a guard and pull your H back and just follow them, and Thompson had no answer for it, and they're one of the better teams in the area, if not the best. There's a first down. Greenbrier, this is what I said. They have to do this. Control the clock. Keep Aquinas off the field. Methodically move down the field. And right now it's worked. Both teams have had long, uh, you know, time-consuming drives. And Greenbrier would love to come away with some points here after Aquinas was unable to. Wolfpack first down at the 40-yard line. And we are getting work. Chip Warren, uh, Greenbrier, <laughs> PA announcer <laughs> letting us know that that's T.J. Jackson wearing number five or number 50 for Aquinas. Writing it on my roster as we speak. In the meantime, the Wolfpack have advanced to the Irish 33-yard line. This is an impressive-looking drive. It is, and they're doing it with Trupp, and they're running the football primarily. They're going to if they see if they get another play in here before the end of the quarter. 16 seconds to try to snap it one more time on second and three. And they will. And Trump will keep and will be stopped for think, no gain. I think he got the ball back. He lost it there. You know, Trump almost a mishandle in the backfield, and he stumbled, and he still powers his way uh, right at the first down mark. So basically, if you're just joining us, you haven't missed anything. We are scoreless as we go to the second quarter. But during the break, they did award Greenbrier the first down. So it's first and 10 Wolfpack from the Aquinas 30-yard line. And it's Claiborne. I believe that was Banks. It was Banks. Yeah, You're Banks right. got You're it. Right. Pick up of three. T.J. Jackson's been very active for Aquinas up front, number 50. It's Trump on the keeper and a big game. And another you, first down. He's a 10th grader, folks, but, man, he runs hard. My question is, how does he only have 180 yards rushing this year? Because right now he looks very effective. It's almost like a Tim Tebow, you know, at quarterback. Don't say that. <laughs> Look, nobody hates the Gators more than me. <laughs> Man, Trupp is having his way right now. And thanks again, his hard running. And also, again, the offensive line for Greenbrier doing a really good job so far. So maybe the Wolfpack have found something here. Trump again on the carry inside the 15. Down to Kira Goldstein with some special guests. Yeah, guys, I know there's a whole football game going on over here, but we're having some fun on the sideline. There's a little healthy competition going on, some friendly love. They're going to play a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. So ready, one, two, three, shoot. Oh, you got it. All right, best of three. Here we go. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, I don't know. I think we're one and one. I think we're one and one. All right, ready? Let's go. One, two, three. You know what? It's a tie. It's all friendship down here. It's all love. Thanks to Buzz and Wolfie for playing. We'll get back to Greenbrier and Aquinas. <laughs> goodness. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the Wolf had an unfair advantage, <laughs> right? You can't even see what he's doing. <laughs> uh, aims to the inside the 10-yard line. They set you up, Buzz, man. My bad. <laughs> Well, John and I can't root for anybody named Buzz. No, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. We appreciate the sponsorship. Don't get us wrong. Oh, yeah. 
just as Georgia fans, you know, Georgia Tech, that whole thing. The Greenbriars look very good. I mean, we've talked about Aquinas eating up. Greenbriars had the ball mm -hmm. almost nine minutes now, eight, at least eight. Trump with Ames in the backfield. And it, it will be a first down, first and goal for the Wolfpack. That was Kirsten Brinson, a sophomore, making the tackle. His older brother, Cam, was one of the great players at Aquinas. Went on to play at Furman. Aquinas, one of those programs, A.B., where there are a lot of familiar names that have we've heard throughout the years. And grandparents, and James Leonard's a great example of that. Uh, his, Leonard his, his, and his grandfather, Denny, no led, led the, uh, the, the, the Irish from when they were boys Catholic uh, uh, from 1946 to 1966. Well, you got Leonard, you've got Douglas, obviously Brentson now, mm -hmm. you, but you've got Lambert. I mean, those are some names that have been there for a while. Parrish. It's interesting to note, James Leonard now the longest tenured head coach in Aquinas history. That's hard to believe. Yeah. Le year 11, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you know they – Well, now, now that's Aquinas. I'm not including yeah. Boys Catholic. Yeah. His grandfather obviously was there for 20 years. Well, and really both of these coaches are two of the most tenured in the area. Tony yeah. Kramer, yeah. the longest tenured coach in Greenbrier history now. Passing our good friend Mickey Derrick. Well, the play made that time by number 44. Keep an eye on that kid tonight. His name is Jaden Worth. He is a ninth grader. Last week he had 13 tackles, four tackles for loss, and three sacks. He is going to be a big-time, big-time player. You said ninth grader. Ninth grader, number 44. And coming in, he's, he's averaging nine tackles a game, but he also has 13 tackles for loss in four games and he's a ninth grader. Yeah, he is. he's going to be a really, really good one here for Aquinas. Huge play here. Third and goal for the Wolfpack from the Aquinas 10. When they brought in the passer. Great. And James Leonard will use his first time out. That gives us a chance to sneak in our QBs by the quarter, brought to you, as always, by Cole Pepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Okay, yeah, we'll start with Greenbrier since they got the ball right now. So uh, Stevens was one of one for nine yards. Uh, they kind of split in duty, and um, Trupp had added 27 yards on the ground. Uh, and Jim Franklin, the one possession Aquinas had in the first quarter, was five of ten for 44 yards passing and added another 27 yards on the ground. Well, we mentioned uh, that these two teams in the outset are, are sharing this field this year. Aquinas played its first game of the season at its actual home stadium and since then has uh, been playing here at Greenbrier. And take a look at the construction in progress over at Aquinas as the Irish begin uh, building a brand new athletic complex. They are, those are the old stands we're all familiar with uh, that have been there for so many years at Aquinas. They have uh, raised so much money for this and they're hoping to have this entire baseball, football, soccer complex complete by August of 2024 next year. They've raised $9.7 million in 13 months to get this project done. And uh, you can see it is well underway. But for now, they share this field with the Greenbrier Wolfpack on this big third down, nothing doing for the pack. Yeah, Stevens with a errant throw there. John, that first shot you had of that whatever it's called, excavator? I don't know. I'm Some sort not of my line of work. Bulldozer. How much would I love being in that bulldozer destroying those stands? <laughs> would that be fun? I don't want to do any of the cleanup work. No, no, but no. That not. part would be fun. Well, this is a Ken Nugent one call. That's all moment for Tony Kramer, and he is going to send the field goal unit onto the field, and it is Keegan Moran who is, well, you know what? I'm not going to jinx him. I'm just going to say he's been all right this year. <laughs> he's trying to give Greenbrier the lead. Yeah, this from 27 or 17, no, 27 out, and it is good. So I was going to say he is 4 of 4 on PATs this year, and that almost matched his long on field goals of 29 yards. And Greenbrier strikes first. The Wolfpack lead 3 to nothing. Welcome back to the Wolf Den, where Greenbrier leads Aquinas three to nothing. We're going to have so much exciting stuff coming up at halftime, but for now, we're about ready to get back to the game. Yeah, lots of special guests coming up. It's also homecoming here at uh, Greenbrier, so 
We'll uh, see who is named homecoming king and queen, but we still got 7.30 left to play in the second quarter. And Aquinas down 3-0. Ooh, another big hit. And another reminder, we will have our Georgia Health Department hit of the game coming up at the end of this one. I think that was Braden Rustin, a sophomore. You know, here's a, if, you're, if, if you're a stat guy, I don't know about these two teams getting a ton of stats. John, we're, we're midway through the second quarter. Both teams have only had the ball once. Yeah, I mean, that, that's great. Nathan pointed out during the break that Greenbrier drive, 19 plays, 80 yards, 11 minutes and 10 seconds off of the clock. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you're a Qantas, you have to restretch yeah. before you go back out there again. Well, <laughs> luckily, some of the guys play play on both sides, but yeah, most of them do not. There's Franklin and looking to throw. And now we'll run, sling it out Mahomes style, and pick up five. Put so much pressure on you offensively, though, because you yeah. know you're going to have so few possessions. Yeah, you can't have miscues unless you start stopping the run. That's what they've got to do. They've got to stop uh, Big Cole Trupp from running right up the middle. That's all Greenbrier's doing, nothing fancy. But they were able to, you know, and, and to be fair, Aquinas did the same thing, marched right down the field. But theirs was a little less. Greenbrier's is a little bit demoralizing, though, when you're just there, you know, they're just coming straight at you and you're. Having a hard time stopping them. Flag down. We haven't had a lot of those as the oh Irish my. look for a whole bunch. And, boy, in and out of the hands of Buddy Rowe Guerrero. Yeah, I'm not sure it was going to matter either way. Was that Buddy Rowe or Zaire Douglas? It's one of the two. Was it five? It was Buddy Rowe? Illegal six. six. They're the same size. On the offense. Five-yard penalty. Yeah, so it wouldn't have mattered. We played it down. It wouldn't have. But, man, if you're Buddy Rowe, you're still <laughs> mad at yourself for dropping that one. Well, how about the throw from Franklin? That was, in, a, that was a solid 40-yard throw. And in traffic with people yeah. all over him, and he just lays it out there perfectly. Yeah, he last year, the first time we saw him, I was like, I think it was against Westside, and I said, some guys, you know, just look the part. He almost looked like a young, like, Jacob Eason. I'll give you all a little former Georgia reference, but he can throw the football. He's a, he's a very talented quarterback, and they know a thing about that. Now, Liam Welch, of course, who helped lead them to the state title, a great quarterback in his day here. Franklin on the keeper. Brought down by Ethan Collins. Welch went on to be a record-breaking all-conference quarterback at Samford. Yeah, played well against the Gators in the yeah, swamp. Yeah. And he's actually been back here working a little bit with Franklin. Pick up a five, so third and four. Franklin to throw. Makes one man miss, makes a second man miss. And now he's got a man, and it is complete. And it's a long one for Aquinas. It's Jack Rhodes. It's going to be a touchdown. I think Jack Rhodes was surprised he caught the ball. If you watch, when he catches it, he doesn't really run at first. 84 yards. Wow. I thought Franklin he was, to Rhodes. Watch, the, watch Rhodes' reaction. It was kind of weird. Great job by the quarterback, Franklin, to get elude all that. But watch this. I thought he was going to get blown up right here. And maybe he did too. Look, he stopped and. And then, then he starts running. I think he thought he was going to catch one, and he didn't. 84 yards. Wow. Huge play for Aquinas. That's the difference, though. Greenbrier doesn't really have that in their bag of tricks, whereas Aquinas does. And now Rhodes. Yeah, scored the touchdown. Yeah. Kicked the extra point. All in a day's work. And the Irish lead 7-3. Well, the Georgia Army National Guard offers you so much uh, more than what you think. Uh, get a degree uh, with money for school, learn job skills that translate to the civilian world, make bonds that last a lifetime, and earn pride for life. When you become a Guard soldier, your family will thank you, your country will thank you, and your future will owe you. The Georgia Army National Guard. 
Wow. So we've had such a back and forth with these two offenses. And as you mentioned, we got midway through the second quarter with both teams only holding the ball once and just a quick strike by Aquinas. And here we are, 7-3. Yeah, 84 yards on the touchdown pass. Great job by Franklin to elude all the pressure. And then he threw a strike. Another perfect pass downfield from the QB. And Jack Rhodes, man, give this kid credit. I mean, last year he steps in and was tremendous as a quarterback once Franklin went down with injury. Now he is Aquinas as one of their top two receivers. As this one will sail out of bounds. So on the last three plays from scrimmage, we've had Rhodes catching a touchdown pass, kicking the extra point, and now kicking off. Well, that puts Rhodes, that gives Rhodes five touchdown catches, and this is Aquinas' fifth game. So I think anybody, we can do that math, right? He's averaging one a game. <laughs> You can, maybe. And he's also over 300 yards receiving for the year as well, so on pace to possibly get 1,000 yards. So can Greenbrier answer? Yeah, and if you're Greenbrier, you can't concern yourself with how they did it. You've got to do what you do well. Sometimes when you get behind in a game, even when it's just close like this, you see the other team's quick strike, you want to try and get a big play. Can't do that. You got what what worked for them was that running game. Right now, though, they do have Stevens back in there at QB. And again, this is a Greenbrier team that has lost 16 straight games dating back to 2021. And boy, Ames took a hit and kept on ticking. What a catch, though. Did you see that? Ames, yeah, great watch this catch, catch. Took the hit. One handed catch by Ames. Watch this. Hauls wow. it in. Took the hit. And held on. What a play by Ames. And we have the Powerade play of the game coming up at the end of tonight's contest, and that's an early nominee for that as well. And a pickup of nine, second and one. Yeah, that was a heck of a catch by Nate Ames. You see him there, number four. Now the quarterback keeper. I'm not sure if it was a keeper or if it was a busted play, but either way, down goes Stevens. And Jaden Worth with another tackle behind the line of scrimmage for the freshman. That does not look like a freshman. He had 13 tackles for loss. Yeah, I watched them this summer on some tapes at camps where they're just wearing workout gear, not football pads, and I'm thinking, this guy doesn't look like a normal freshman, and nobody could block him. And you're talking about a lot of these elite camps, it was supposedly the top offensive lineman, and they none of them could handle it. A pretty big third down for the Wolfpack now. Down seven to three. With four to change left here to go in the half. And they'll pick up the first down. That's into the arms of Elijah Harris. Well, that's a smart play call. I really like that. A quick hitter. It does a lot of things. One, obviously, you need the first down. But it's a quick one. That pass rush of Aquinas can't get to you. And also, it gives that quarterback, Stevens, a ton of confidence. Yeah, Stevens just a sophomore. And anytime you can give young guys more confidence, it'll benefit you down the road. First to 10 from the 48 yard line. Stevens. Oh, he's going to throw a long one. He's got a guy. It's Vernon Guyton, and it's broken up. Flags from everywhere. Yeah, pass interference. That was a beautiful throw. That's Sire Douglas on the coverage, but what a, th yeah, what a throw by Stevens. And it was on the money. On the defense. Pass interference from Zaire Douglas. Love the play. First down. Trying to go to Guyton, who came into the game with over 200 yards receiving and three touchdowns. You'll see there, yeah, he got to him. You know, it wasn't as much on the replay in slow-mo. It wasn't as much contact as I thought, but it, he definitely got to him. Moves the Wolfpack all the way to the Irish 36-yard line. Well, speaking of long touchdowns, Braylon Staley, the Tennessee commit, just got word. 81-yard touchdown against North Augusta. Oh, well, the Pack right. looking for one here. They're looking for Guyton again and overthrown. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I, you know, I'm wrong. I said that's not a quiet, not a Greenbrier's game, those deep passes. <laughs> and what do they do? They come out throwing deep passes. You know, the coaches and staff may have saw something and Aquinas cheating up and decided to go after them. But it is uh, – they, they had the receiver both times.
second and 10. Check down. And it is complete, and it is Ames. And Ames has a first down and a bunch more inside the red zone. Yeah, good blocking. They set up the screen perfectly. There is a flag down. But yep. Man, great job setting up that screen. Flag down to the 19. Dominic Eubanks, our official. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Play it down. Well, that's a tough one for Greenbrier mm -hmm. because that play was set up beautifully. Ames made a couple of guys miss. There was good blocking, although obviously they got the hold in there. Tough one there because that was a big, big play to put them inside the red zone with a first down. I'm going to bring Trutt back in there at quarterback. So you take out one sophomore and put another one back in there. And as we've talked about, the struggles this Greenbrier program has had, but the future's bright. You've got a lot yeah. of good young players in this program. Yeah, both these schools are playing a lot of young guys, a lot. And it is Trump. And he's brought down at the 27. That, that is Jackson again. He's been all over the place tonight for Aquinas. <coughs> So the clock ticks under two and a half minutes to play here in the first half. And a pretty big third down here. Third and one from the 27 yard line for the Wolfpack. I'm guessing, yep, Trump keeper. Gotta be close. Yeah, I don't know if he got it. Good job getting in there by number eight for Aquinas Copeland Thurman. Yeah, Looks like he's short. short. Yeah. 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 Spot has him about a half yard shot. If you're Tony Kramer, I, and again, we've already done the Ken Nugent one call, that's all moment. Why not throw another one in there? I, was gonna I say, go for it here. I was going to say we've got a sponsor, <laughs> but I, I, so I got to say it, but I throw that out. There's no question here you go for yeah. it. If he's got any kind of throw yeah. off of that. Oh, yeah. Can't, just a little dump over the line to a tight end or something here. Or even, or even a bootleg like James Brown did in the Big 12 title game for Texas years ago because it would be wide open. They are keying so much on that run. Oh, and it looked like maybe they were doing that. They are going to swing past it. Timeout. Aquinas. Aquinas got the timeout. They saw it. Good job by the coach. That's one thing I'll say. we got a lot of well-coached teams in the area. Aquinas' coaching staff does a really good job. Mm -hmm. and coach Fantastic. Leonard there saw something that he did not like. Well, we're here at Greenbrier. We're not too far away from the baseball field here, and that's where – this athletic department has made its bread and butter. There's one of your favorites, A.B. Oh, yeah, Chase, Chase Dolander. Dolander, ninth overall pick this year in the MLB draft for the Colorado Rockies, the 2022, 2022 SEC Pitcher of the Year. He went 10-0 with a 2.39 ERA that season. And here in Greenbrier in 2019 in his junior season, 6-1 with a .79. ER. Well, and he flew under the radar because his senior year was canceled because of COVID. Mm -hmm. He had a scholarship offer to Georgia Southern. He went there, and in one of his first starts, he faced Tennessee and was outstanding, was dominant. Uh, so after that year, he decides to transfer. Was it didn't have a school in mind really, but he ends up at Tennessee, and what a career he had there for two years. And he couldn't have him to a nicer kid. And his velocity. John went from uh, they get the first down here. Yeah, fourth and one. They go for it and get it. First down pack. His velocity went from about 86 to 88 his senior high school to 98-99 by the time he was leaving Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, I've heard him on your radio show, very well-spoken, very just, yeah. a, just a good kid. So uh, uh, he also may be a harbinger for tonight's uh, Brand Smart USA trivia question. Oh, just, yeah. just, just saying. Just, there's, there's a few banners over there on that baseball field. Yes, there there's are. A lot. Compton that pitched for the Pirates for a little while. Yeah, Nolan. But the best of them yeah. all didn't pitch in the pros. I, I, I'll, I'll argue anybody. Nolan Belcher. Yeah. Was yeah. Well, well, you you yeah. had Nolan Belcher and yeah. Compton in the playoffs where your one-two yeah. rotation was nasty. And, and, by the way, your hitters on that team were Rich Poitras, Fudd yeah. Johnson. Right. I mean, that team was, was yeah. loaded. They went 35-1, yeah. and one, won the state title. Yeah. Poitras and Fudd may be one of the best athletes we've ever yeah. had in the area. Stevens was under pressure and threw it away, second and ten. Yeah, that that uh, I think that was the 07. Well, you had Roland team. in center as well. Oh for yeah, Georgia Jeff Tech. Roland and was drafted by the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. So that team was loaded. That team was loaded. It, I, I I argue Todd Green even argues with me on this one because he says it's the '89 Evans team because they're the last team in Georgia going defeated. That thir that that 07 Greenbrier team. Are, <laughs> it was either 07 or 08. They were they were unbelievable. But they did lose one. <laughs> 
Inside the final minute now. This is Joshua Banks. Banks for the lane. Inside the 15. If you're Greenbrier, you got to watch the clock here. There we go. They get stopped with the first down. They do have two timeouts left. The clock will stop as the chains move. And there will be first and 10 at the 14, 13 yard. This has been Greenbrier, both times they've had the ball, have, have been, their drives have been successful. Boy, they. 10 seconds have gone off the clock with them in the huddle. Yeah. Just, these are, we saw Laney do Still that moving. last week. It's just you can't do it. You're Under just, 30 now. Stevens throws. Incomplete. That will stop the clock with 22.9. But again, they wasted about 15 seconds by not being ready to get up to the line of scrimmage. We saw Laney really mismanage the clock late in that. And think about it. If they had gotten a score there, that game was 14-14 late in the third, and Laney had the ball. They had gotten a score before the half. Who knows if Laney you know, pulls off the upset. But Greenbrier could really do some damage here if they could come away with especially a big boost to their confidence that they can somehow get the lead going into the locker room. And again, a team that could – young players experienced a lot of losing, could use some confidence, and the clock stops with 19.2, and it'll be third down. So this is this is about to be play 13 of this drive, and you just got it. So two drives, 32 plays. Yeah. That is pretty unbelievable, really. It's a good game plan, but you yeah. got to got to score. Yeah, for sure. If you're going to do that, because you're not going to get the ball many times, you do have to score. Well, this is a big play here. Yeah, third and ten from the 13-yard line. They can get inside the three, they can get first and goal. But again, you're only 19.2 seconds left. Two timeouts left. You, I was going to say, you do have the timeout, so. And we may take one here. Ooh. They have two. And they obviously timeout. saw something as well. They still, if, if you have one timeout there, oh, that's a rough call. But they had two, so they didn't see, they saw something they didn't like in the alignment. I mean, I. I think if you're Greenbrier, everything's played out perfect in this first half. Yeah. If you can get the touchdown here, yeah. it's like you've held the ball, you've kept Franklin off the field for the and most really, part. And really, all you did is get, you, if you don't give up the one big play, I mean, because again, you know, they, they, they bent but didn't break on that first drive, but yeah. that 84 yard pass played the difference in the game so far. You put this in, get the ball to start the second half and go on another long drive. And yeah, and eat up a lot of the third quarter. I mean, we thought after Aquinas' drive, we're like, oh, they're dominating the clock. Well, <laughs> Greenbrier. It'll be interesting to see time of possession at the half. I mean, it's going to be. If, if they hold it through the end of this quarter, it'll 17 be to over, seven. over 16 and a yeah. half minutes. Wow. Yeah. So, again, they can stop the clock one more time. Third and ten from the thirteen. Got to get rid of it. Oh. He didn't. Down he goes. Got to call time here. 12.8 seconds. And Tony Kramer does call his final timeout. Frank Anderson with the sack. The problem is you've backed your kicker up several yards now. You know, now you're looking at about a 40-yard field goal. You got to get rid of the football there. That's just a, you know, he's a sophomore. And you're going to make mistakes when you're a 10th grader making your, what is it, his fifth varsity start and that's I love that that's the coaching aspect right there with his coach his offensive coordinator telling him you know coaching him up well Keegan Moran the senior place kicker for Greenbrier his long on this season is 29 yards this would be a 39 yarder yeah I said 40 it's actually gonna be 39 you're right and <laughs> that's a again without the sack he's probably about six or seven yards closer this is a Big test for Moran. And now Aquinas will call timeout and make Moran think about it for a second. Which gives us a chance to tell you, coming up at the half, Kara Goldstein will have the Eichel's Law Firm Halftime Show. Some special guests. We will shine a spotlight on our host school, Greenbrier High School, and tell you what special things are going on here. All coming up on the Eichel's Law Firm Halftime Show. And it's also homecoming night, so we got the homecoming court. We'll see who's named 
homecoming king and queen here from the Wolfpack Marching Band. And there you see the lonely kicker, Keegan Moran, <laughs> just not going to the sideline, not talking to anybody. There's a song about that. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be lonely if he knocks this through. No, though. he will a not. A bunch of people congratulate him, I promise you. C.J. Kramer, the holder. Not just three, he might be escorting somebody at halftime. <laughs> yeah, true. From 39. Plenty of leg. No problem. That was big. That was big. And it pulls the Wolfpack within one at seven to six with 8.3 seconds left in this first half. This has been our, I hate to say it, this has been one of our more fast-paced first halves we've had this year on Game Night Live. <laughs> well, it's homecoming, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> they'll make, well, up, for, they'll make well, up for it at yeah. halftime. Now that John said that, yeah, it'll be well. a four-hour second half. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I had, last week, Grovetown beat Jefferson County 63-43, to and I heard that they didn't get back from Jefferson County until the wee hours. Oh, it, that game wow. took forever. Well, yeah. we were in, uh, what, the third quarter last week at the Brickyard? Yeah, and, and, uh, and finished up. Midland Valley was, was already done in their game with Westwood. And by uh, the way, all the games tonight, you can uh, get the results on Football Friday night with uh, Brendan Robertson and Graham Lee, 1135. 30 minutes dedicated to high school football, only on WJBF. Nathan, you mentioned the banners that are hanging at the baseball field. Just to our left, you've got seven state championships with the baseball team. Don't forget the two by the softball the team, softball too, which, team, is, yeah. which is between here and the baseball field. The sport that's growing in popularity, it seems like, in Columbia County more than any of them is lacrosse. Lacrosse, yeah, it is. And you know what else? Pickleball? Well, no. <laughs> Girls flag football. Yes. It's yes. gotten huge yes. in Columbia yes. County. Yeah. Yeah. You're 100% right about that as a flag flies Didn't on Didn't Greenbrier's end. team make it to a state championship game? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I know that Greenbrier, Lakeside, and Evans have all had decent teams. Oh, yeah, the Greenbrier team did, like, uh, wow. the last year of the year. On the kicking team. Continue our penalty. Speaking Come of pickleball, see the spot. I oh, saw maybe the dumbest product of all time. Here we go. <laughs> the dumb, it, it, you know, I, look, I get it. If you've got billions of dollars, you're going to spend money on stupid things. <laughs> Louis Vuitton has a $100,000 pickleball set. Oh, my. And I don't mean like the nets and everything. And the, uh -huh. <laughs> just the pickleballs and the uh, paddles are racking. That's called more money than sense. <laughs> exactly. Now, that, that could be a, this could be a big personal foul penalty, 15 yards added here on the end of this yeah. kickoff because now Franklin may can get this ball to the end zone. He's got the arm. They are 65 yards away from it. 8.3 seconds to get there. And oh. instead, they will run it. And let the clock run out. Kate's on the carry. And another nice tackle by number 66, Collette. And that will bring us to the end of the first half. As our, our booth is collapsing around us. I mean, <laughs> earlier I was thinking about Sue and John. I'm not now. <laughs> our, our, our banner behind us just came crashing down. There we are. See, yeah. Yeah, we're, the Look. so the assistant coaches are coming down this ladder here, and they've knocked this thing. But we're good. All right, so we're going to go to break, and it is seven to six, and the Eichel's Law Firm halftime show is next on Game Night Live. Goodness gracious. I'm here with Joe and Isabel from Heart and Hustle. And Isabel, can you tell me a little bit about where you are located? Yeah, so we're located on Washington Road um, in Eagle Point Plaza, uh, Suite 5. And what products and services do you offer? Yeah, so we offer a variety of different things. We offer screen printing, embroidery, direct-to-film, uh, vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, a little bit of everything. And then, Joe, how can your customers or the public or people who want to get to know you follow you and then come visit? So we are actually, our address is 4534 Washington Road, Suite 5. Suite five. Um, also, social media, you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. 
just about every platform that there is. Thank you so much, guys. Check out Heart and Hustle, and we'll be right back. Okay, I feel that uh, the performing arts is such an important uh, part of our well-rounded education, whether the kids are uh, doing art, uh, clay, or 3D uh, drawings, or things like that, or marching in the band, or performing on the stage. Uh, there's a lot of value, intrinsic value, in, uh, in the human growth of the person uh, just by being part of a team that they can all uh, kind of uh, bond with and empathize with uh, and uh, struggle with. Uh, because there's a lot of struggle and a lot of anxiety and the amount of work that goes into uh, performance. It's one of those really risky, scary things that kids can do, um, but it's safe at the same time. Seeing how many people love music, love acting, love dancing, and everybody kind of has their own specialty and then when you come together and like put up production together it shows how well you can work together. Our theater program is a community in itself that we all have different backgrounds but we all come together in one safe space so it's a great opportunity to meet new people make new friends. Don't be nervous to try it and audition like we are all loving and welcoming and accepting and we just want to spread positivity and make everybody feel welcome and encourage to have fun. Uh, I think intrinsically that the kids really get a lot out of the shared experiences uh, that are so important in, uh, in building uh, self-confidence, resilience, uh, and uh, they, they can kind of lean on each other. Uh, they find people can help them with their, their homework or studying for a test. They meet people who have shared interests and it really helps know their self-esteem overall. It inspires me to want to tell people to branch out of their comfort zone because you never know how far you can go, especially with our director Hanson. He inspired me and really encouraged me to keep going and made me do a lot of things that I never knew was possible. Back down here on the sidelines, I'm with Brittany from Georgia Department of Public Health. And can you tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing right now in the community? Sure. So right now in the um, Columbia County Health Department, where I am, we're located at 1930 William Field Parkway. Um, we are offering family service um, services in our community. That's just me, annual PAPs, breast exam for women. We're also doing a walk-in clinic on Wednesdays from 8 to 3 for um, immunizations for the kids and also adults. Um, we're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, and we have um, also other services that we offer throughout the department, contraceptives, um, other forms the birth control methods and a lot of different stuff like that that we're offering for women in our community. It's so incredible what you're doing. If someone needs to find more information about it, where can they look? Um, they can reach out to the Georgia Department um, website or they can call us at 706-868-3336. Thank you so much, Brittany. We will be right back. I am back on the sideline with my friends Tanika and Sean. And Tanika, can you tell me a little bit about how you got started working at McDonald's? Yeah, so I got started with McDonald's as a shift manager and I kept moving my way up. So um, I love helping people. So McDonald's is an organization that loves to help people. So that's kind of the way I got started. I do know that you love to help people. How many uh, high school kids or do you have high school kids that are working for McDonald's? I have several high school kids that work for McDonald's. Actually, I have a couple up there in the stands. Um, I'm the general manager here at uh, Riverwood McDonald's. So I have a lot of them that works for me here. That's so cool that they're here tonight. And Sean, last question for you. How important is it and in what ways do you guys do outreach with students in the community? Oh, it's very important. Obviously, uh, they represent a large part of our staffing. Um, we enjoy their energy and their excitement and obviously they're the future of our business, so we're super excited about that. Um, as far as outreaching to them, we always do events for the schools, make teachers nights, we help them. Obviously, we have a uh, college and high school programs for them that we provide uh, as a benefit so really enjoy having them around they bring a good energy and they're fun to be around thank you so much for all you do sean and Tanika. we appreciate it now we're going to check in on a very special section of the band the homecoming court we'll be right back
daughter of Jeffrey and Joanna McDonald. She is escorted tonight by our father. She is the vice president of the National Honor Society, Beta Club, Mu Alpha Theta, VP of the Science National Honor Society, Science Olympiad, and Health Occupations, Student of America. She's also a member of Student Government, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, here with me now, I have Sergeants Cooper, Blount, and Hitchner. And Sergeant Cooper, can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in the Georgia Army National Guard? Uh, yes, I was looking for a way to pay for college and as well as serving my country. Uh, I enlisted uh, during my senior year of high school before I graduated. Once I graduated, went to basic training, came back, went straight to college. What would you say to someone who is a student and is looking to possibly get into this and considering it as an option? Uh, well, the first step for them is to get with their local recruiter, whether that's uh, here with, in the CSRA with me, Soren Booker, Soren Hitchner, um, or just Googling their local recruiter and getting more information about the benefits we offer. Thank you so much for the time, guys. We really appreciate it. We're going to take another look at that very special band. We will be right back to announce the winner of Homecoming. Welcome back to Game Night Live, Aquinas versus Greenbrier. It is now time to see who wins Homecoming. We'd like to introduce your 2023 homecoming queen, Miss Lily O'Neill. Congratulations to the homecoming queen here at Greenbrier High School for 2023. And now it's time to get back to football. And we will uh, take a look at our uh, first half stats, which, listen, we were talking about time of possession. And to me, that is the most interesting number on that screen. Yeah, 16 and a half minutes for Greenbrier. Um, pretty, pretty crazy when you consider Aquinas had the ball for six and a half minutes the very first drive of the game. They only had it for a minute after. Now, that minute was big because they had a 79-yard touchdown. As a matter of fact, if you take out the 79-yard touchdown, which obviously, you know, I, I get it, uh, they're pretty pretty close in yardage. It's uh, Greenbrier's been pretty balanced. Now, Aquinas has also piled up some penalties, six penalties you see there for four, 40 yards. I'm sure James Leonard is addressing that in the halftime. As we speak, and that brings us to our first half highlights. Let's show you how we got it. Seven, it, honestly, you look at the scoreboard, you say 7-6, not a lot has happened. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Yeah, we had a bunch of big hits, for sure. Here's Franklin looking across the middle, one of those big hits, boom. <laughs> I mean, lowering the boom. And earlier I said, 
That was Jaden Hill who, who laid that hit. And this was the big play. Franklin avoiding the rush, and then he goes downfield 79 yards. Jack Rhodes thought he's going to get hit. Oh, okay, I'll just run a <laughs> touchdown then. Outruns everybody, and that's touchdown number five on the season for Rhodes receiving. And then he kicked the extra point. Yep. And then he kicked off. And then Greenbrier got a little dry, uh, drive going. Great one-handed catch here by Ames. He's knocked out of bounds by Zaire Douglas. And then Keegan Moran with his second field goal of the half. This one a career-long 39 yards, and it cleared easily. That would have been good from 49. Yeah, so Greenbrier cut it to one there, 7-6. to six. And so that's where we stand, yeah, 7-6. to six. Uh, As we get ready for the third quarter of play, Greenbrier will receive the second-half kickoff. But before they do that, we have some more order of business to get to. Let's take a look at our uh, high school scoreboard. And, again, you can see all of these highlights and uh, – reaction to these games on football Friday night coming up for you at 1135 over on WJBF but in the meantime some, some very close games yeah well. great matchups in the area one of the biggest is that Strom Thurmond North Augusta game 81 yard touchdown in that game for Braylon Staley the Tennessee commit for Strom Thurmond uh, how about Grovetown and Evans Grovetown just hit a three-run homer to take a six to five <laughs> lead in that one Washington Wilkes leads uh, Hancock Central 28 zip Lincoln County all over ARC 24 to 3. Burke County uh, putting it on Statesboro. They're trying to stay undefeated. And Silver Bluff in that big rivalry matchup with Barnwell, they lead it 14 to 8. Midland Valley, they're going to go 6 and 0 for the first time in school wow. history. They are up 49 zip on Swansea. And South Aiken trying to get their first win of the year uh, with their outstanding quarterback, Terrence Smith. They've got their running back, Javon Edwards, back. They lead Clinton 20 to 15. Well, that Midland Valley team is, uh, is something. They are something. Trayvon Dunbar, but they've got some other pieces that can do do well also. Uh, but Dunbar certainly is the straw that stirs the drink there for Midland Valley. All right, so thanks for watching the Eichols Law Firm Halftime Show. The second half kickoff is next. Greenbrier will receive after this on Game Night Long. I'm here with Greenbrier's Coach Kramer. Coach, we talked earlier in the week about mental mistakes. What are you pleased with so far in the first half from your guys? Well, it's such a close game. Both teams have had their mistakes. Um, we just have to come out in the second half and, and try to win that battle. Uh, we talked a little bit about production uh, when, when we spoke earlier in the week, and you said that your guys have really been stepping up. They've been working hard. What adjustments are you looking to see in the second half that are going to be different from the first half? We, we just want to continue to play mistake-free football. We're doing our very best. Um, Aquinas is, I mean, gosh, they, they're a big play team. Uh, we just have to continue to take care of what we can control, and we'll see what happens in the fourth quarter. How do you plan to lock up their run game? It's hard. I'm more worried about throwing the ball right now. But uh, and we're going to go out and then continue to play hard. Our guys are doing a great job, and, and, and they are too. Um, it's going to be more a fun finish. Thank you so much for the time, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank you to Coach Kramer. Yeah, thanks to Coach Kramer. Thank you, Kira. And, 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 and you got to be pleased, A.B., if you are Tony Kramer, to be down only 7-6 to the number 10 team in the state. However, he's right, 130 yards passing. Again, 79 of that came on one play. Yeah, I think if you told him, though, that he had the ball for 16 and a half minutes, that's just what the doctor ordered for Greenbrier. I mean, he's worried about throwing the ball. I, the the Trump experience at quarterback was looking pretty good running the ball, too. And, again, they were keeping the ball away from Aquinas because you see what Aquinas can do. If they're not dropping passes, as Coach Leonard said, you know, they might have got another score there. So, this, I, I knew we would have a tight game. I knew it would be close. Where Greenbrier is winning the game, Aquinas maybe has better skill position, guys. Greenbrier's been better up front. They're winning the battle up there, and that is why they are in this football game. So let's get you those QBs by the quarter for quarter number two, brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yeah, for Franklin for Aquinas was 7 of 12 for 130 yards and a touchdown. Had a few drops or those numbers would be even better. Uh, and then added 32 yards on the ground. Um, Trump had 11 attempts on the ground, 44 yards. Uh, rushing, he was mainly the running quarterback for Greenbrier. And then Stevens was 5 of 10 for 43 yards. There you go. And Stevens, both of those kids, just ninth graders. And Franklin's an underclassman, and his touchdown pass went to a sophomore. And Aquinas' best defender this year has been a freshman. And all these young guys, it's so incredible to see so many young guys contributing at such a high level at the varsity, uh, at the varsity level. So you're saying we might see these 
guys a few more times on I, Game I, Night Live over yeah, the years. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Gro- wasn't that Grove Towns coach on your show? That's talking about so many young, yeah. good players in the area. There are. There are a lot of good, one, good young ones, and uh, and even we've had some move out of the area that were ranked and all that. I get it, but man, there's a lot of good players here. Uh, you know, it, like I said, I don't know that we have as many, any great teams like we've had in the past, but we've got more great players, uh, recruitable players, than we've had in a while. We're underway in the second half. Short kick. Greenbrier will start from its own 28-yard line. Fair catch there by Kamari Walker. So let's see what Greenbrier decides to do. They've kind of rotated in Trupp, and, and it looks like Trupp's going to be in on the offense this time around. And again, just two possessions for the Wolfpack. That is hard to believe. In the first half. In the first half. That is crazy. And really, Aquinas had two because they got the ball for their third one with just a couple of seconds on the clock. So Trupp and Ames in the backfield. Greenbrier trying to get their first win of the year. They've had so many close calls. Yeah, first win in 700 days, actually. 700 days. Wow. Yep, 16 straight losses dating back a couple of years. And I was looking, you know, we've had some teams All fall on some hard times and on the several streaks over Five 20 games. Penalty. First down. I mean, as, as a coach, you definitely can't really talk about it or, or harp on it because it's just going to add more stress. But but the guys want to win. I well, mean, they put in so much work. The Evans game, they were up late. Evans rallied and somehow won 22 to 21. The Lakeside game last week was 14 to 10. It's not like they're getting blown out. They've got the ch- a chance to win. And this is another week where they've got a chance. And if the offensive line plays the way they did in the first half, they're going to be in this football game because they're going to be able to move the ball and control the clock. And after the penalty, big gain. Wolfpack across the 42-yard line, and that's Trupp. And he was finally brought down by Buddy Rowe Guerrero, but great run. And Trupp now approaching 100 yards if he's not over it. At 44 yards oh, in the first 44 half. Oh, 44 the first half. 44 yeah. in the first half. That's going to put him up around 70 right there with that run. I was thinking he even had more in the first half, but I did hear It, it. seemed like it. It did seem that way. He just didn't have enough possessions. Yeah, yeah. And that was a big one. Easily the biggest run of the night for Greenbrier. First to 10 from the 39. And, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Truck well, and that's the, the 40. Thing. That's the thing, John. That time I think it was Copeland Thurman that hit him. It was number eight. They hit him behind the line, but that big, strong kid, and again, just a 10th grader, finds a way to fall forward and bounce off and get some yardage out of it. And that's a five-yard gain. Five-yard gain. Down. He was hit at the line of scrimmage by multiple players. I mean, yeah. very impressed with him. I, like I said, the biggest shock to me is how does he only have 180 yards rushing so far this year? He'll keep it again on second down, and he'll be a couple of yards shy. But it puts him in a good spot here, third and short. Third and one from the 48. Yeah, you want to get it here. You don't want to put yourself in a position at midfield to have to go for it on fourth down. Now they've switched quarterbacks here. Are they going to do a direct snap? Easily get it. Get it. So first down, Greenbrier across midfield into Aquinas territory. Again, that Greenbrier front front line, man, I got to give them credit. They have been outstanding tonight. Yes, yeah, so that's that's. We start to see a couple of things in a row. It's a pattern. So if it's a short yard situation, they bring Stevens in. He gets under center. It's probably a sneak. You so rarely see a quarterback go under center in high school anymore. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so fresh set of downs for the pack at the 48-yard line of Aquinas. Stevens under center, and he'll hand off. How about a little old-school yeah, I formation? Yeah, yeah that was say. again. We don't <laughs> things we don't usually see on a Friday night. Yeah, Cameron Lou at fullback, number 89, <clears throat> and that high formation and Ames at tailback. It's hard to find fullbacks anymore. I mean, for a long time, I mean, the high formation is what. Every college team mm-hmm. ran. Back in the heyday of all the running backs, the Billy Sims and the Marcus Dupree's and the Earl Campbell's and the Herschel's and the Bo Jackson's, I mean, that out formation was devastating. Aquinas jumps. 
It's crazy how popular they are, too. I could probably five. name you. On the defense, five-yard penalty. Like ten. F I could probably name you more fullbacks that play for Georgia than I could yeah, tailbacks because yeah, yeah. they're just so much fun to watch. So from second and nine to second and four. And Trupp is back in there with Ames to his left. Greenbrier continues to churn the clock. They have eaten up almost 20 minutes with the football. And one of your keys to the game is Ames keeps to the 40. Be third and two. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, with Aquinas, you see they can strike quick. They love to throw it. They love to play fast. And this is what Greenbrier's doing. They're slowing it. It's, it's, it's almost like a fighter making it kind of a, you know, not, not a dirty in terms of cheating, but like a dirty fight, like a sloppy thing. You're trying to get in there and mix it up. That's what they're doing. They're trying to slow it down, make it an ugly game, and try to get this victory. Trump out of the shotgun with Ames, and Trump will keep, and he'll have the first down. And Greenbrier continues this drive. They have now held it. And he's still on his feet, by the way. Almost. Down to the 31-yard line. That's a pickup of 11. Well, that's a combination of the line of scrimmage blowing people off the ball and then Trump just hard to bring down. At what, at what point in the second half is the time of possession and plays start to wear down their clients? Because they're already shorthanded. Well, uh, not only does it wear them down, John, but how about how frustrated – some of the offensive playmakers have to be. Jim Franklin's probably over there chomping at the bit to get back on the on the field. I mean, I don't know. He's probably never played a game where midway through the third quarter he's only had the ball for seven minutes. And, again, if you weren't with us at, during the Eichel's Law Firm halftime show, time of possession, Greenbrier had it for 14 minutes to Aquinas' four minutes in the first half. That's a, for, I, listen, I went to the University of Georgia, and I can still do that math. Well, they've had it in the game now. They're approaching five minutes here. They had it 16 half. They're approaching 21 and a half minutes mm. that they've had the football compared to Aquinas's what, seven? Yeah, you're right. That's got to be very frustrating for Aquinas. Yeah. Second and nine from the 31. Yeah. Aquinas has only run 18 plays today. That is just nuts. Excuse me, 19, because they had the one before the half. Trump, high snap, complete to Guyton. He's out of bounds at the 27-yard line. The ball fumbled there right at the end, but went out of bounds. Yeah, did. Got it. Pack will have it back, but it will be third and we'll call it eight, long seven, short eight. We've seen this on every drive, though. They get down in this 20, 25 yard range, though, and the offense bogs down. Yeah. Well, Keegan Moran is hit from 39. The field goal kicker for the Wolf Pack. A little trickeration here on third down, and the Irish weren't biting. That was Cameron Liu on the carry. So it'll be fourth and five in an early one call that's all moment for Greenbrier. They're gonna kick it. Yeah, it's gonna be about a 43 yarder, I think. Yep, 43 yards on the nose, A.B. Well, we've had a kicker win MVP already once this year. <laughs> he is hit from 39. Now, if he hits it the same way, it's good uh, because he crushed that one. This from 43. And offline. And so the score remains 7 to 6 with 5.57 to play here in the third quarter. And of course, you can catch the rebroadcast of tonight's game night live. Uh, catch all the action Sunday at noon on the mothership at WJBF News Channel 6. <laughs> Yep, great way to get your NFL football Sunday started. I did it last Sunday. I have to turn the volume down. I don't like hearing myself. <laughs> and I definitely don't like hearing you. <laughs> well, if he's going to sing, you definitely want to turn the volume. <laughs> so as we start this drive, 
Aquinas, or I'm sorry, Greenbrier has now held the ball 22 minutes and 33 seconds of this football game compared to before that play, Aquinas 427. That's unbelievable. Second and six for the Irish. Franklin has his man complete first down across the 30 to the 32 yard line. That's Buddy Rowe Guerrero who had that monster game last week with 12 catches for 194 yards. I, th I think we're going to need a segment on your show of best names. And Buddy Rose up there. I still the best all time is still Peanut Butler. <laughs> Man, that one's Peanut gonna be really Butler. that one's gonna be really <laughs> tough to top. <laughs> uh, Guerrero had 24 catches and a touchdown coming into this game, and the Irish taking their time as the clock ticks down under five minutes. And Franklin, with all kinds of time himself, and over the middle, and almost intercepted. He was looking for Brandon Ross, a senior wide receiver. Yeah, Chris Chappell, the linebacker, dropped back in coverage and did an excellent job playing the ball. And, yeah, the tip drill almost worked there for Greenbrier. They had a couple of guys that nearly missed the interception there. So good job by Chappell, who's usually known as the team's tackling machine. He averages almost 13 a game at that time. He dropped back in coverage and made a nice play on the ball. Franklin 7 of 12 for 130 yards and that touchdown pass in the first quarter. Also ran for 32, or first half I should say. And this will be a short gain, bring up third and six. Yeah, Franklin's thrown a couple of gorgeous deep balls in the uh, game tonight. And the catch that time was a different receiver than we called out tonight. That's Brandon Ross. He was actually the receiver who caught the very first pass of the game. We haven't called his name since. Big third down here for the Irish now. Third and five from the 37-yard line. Yeah, this is huge for the Greenbrier defense if they can somehow get off the field after that long drive they had to start the half. Coming away empty, though, just demoralizing. Yeah. Ran it all the way down there and then no points. Franklin fires complete. It's a first down across midfield into uh, Greenbrier territory. Goes Brandon Ross. So Ross on back-to-back -back plays. Kira, uh, Kira Goldstein's on the sidelines. Guys, I got a chance to talk to Coach Leonard at halftime, and he had some things to say about the game. He wasn't overly pleased, but what he did say is that he's got guys like Brandon Ross, TJ Jackson, Chris Jackson, who are all playing multiple spots that they've never played before. They're shifting around, and like I said, I think I've said this a couple times, this is the year of adjustments for Aquinas. So I think we're seeing some of those guys give some good production now, but just, you know, it's interesting to keep in mind that some of these guys are playing positions they've never played before. Well, Franklin... Looking on the near side for Guerrero. Yeah, uh, Coach Leonard was not uh, nonplussed, I guess would be the best way to put it yeah. at halftime. Um, but again, still leading 7 6, and you're getting late now here in the third quarter. He was not happy with the run blocking, he was not happy with the drop passes. What was he happy about? <laughs> To be, out, to be done with the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I really like James Leonard, though. You know, for a young guy to take over the way he did, but to have the confidence in himself to surround himself with good coaches that it, with a lot of experience, a lot of times you don't want you know, maybe those guys. You want to be the guy. And, uh, but, man, it's paid off, and, and he's a heck of a coach, I mean, you know, no question. A Guerrero gets dragged back by a host of green shirts. Yeah, it was amazing to me when I was looking at this last night that – in the entire history of Aquinas football, they've had four region championships, the one state championship, all of those, James yep. Leonard. Yep. With all of the coaches they've had, all of the history. And, by the way, he's never missed a playoff. He had ten straight years yep. he's taken them to the postseason. And i got to get – you know, I want to give Matt Lozada a little credit, too. He built this program up, and he left them in really good hands before uh, when he moved on yeah. to, to his new job. And uh, yeah, But Jim, uh, James Leonard did not skip a beat when he took over, that's for sure. That may have given us the best interview ever. He gave, he gave us the best quote. Come get you Come some. Come get you some. Now the ball is out. Did he, did he toss that or was it fumbled? Let's take another look at it. I think he, I think he tried that. to toss it to, yeah. to Rhodes. 
I, I really do. At the end of that play, it looked to me like he tried to toss it. Yep. Yeah, he sure tried did. a little little Mahomes deal there and unsuccessful in the Busby's replay. But so here we go, fourth down, fourth and eleven. And they're going for it from the forty-four yard line. Line to make is the thirty-three. Well, they feel like they only have the ball so many times. You almost have to go for it. And now James Leonard will call his first timeout of this third quarter, which gives us a chance uh -oh. to ask the Brandsmart USA <laughs> trivia question, A.B. Uh, so we mentioned earlier Chase Dolander, uh, the former Greenbrier product, uh, went in the first round of the Major League Baseball draft to the Colorado Rockies uh, this year in the 2023 draft. Your trivia question is, what future Braves postseason hero was Colorado's number one draft pick in 2009? Ooh, okay. We'll give you some time to think about that, give A.B. a chance to mull it over. We'll have that answer for you in the fourth quarter. And looking back over Colorado's draft history, they've had some pretty successful draft picks. Yeah. I don't know why they're not better than they Todd are right Elton now. Was a really good Troy Tulowitzki, Trevor yeah. Story. None of those are the answer, though. So here we go, fourth and 11. So this is our first punt of the night. You would think in a 7-6 wow. yep. in a, in a yep. yep. game with 2.20 to go, our <laughs> first was, punt of the night. I was holding it back. I was going to say, <laughs> when have you ever seen a 7-6 score wow. yep. going almost into the fourth True. quarter, no turnovers, True. no punts? True. So the uh, Wolfpack will take over at their 20. And let's take a look at what's coming up on Monday on The Means Report. How can we find common ground in this country and agree to disagree? Starts with us as an organization that pushes for that. Former Augusta Mayor Deke Copenhaver is a big part of it. He's our special guest on The Means Report. Always entertaining to hear from the former mayor. That's Monday at 1230 on WJBF. With 2.12 to go in the third, Wolfpack take over, and it's Claiborne. Yeah, just keeping them honest with some passes and plays like that, letting them know that it's still available to them if they want to do it. You know, they've been very effective moving the football, and I thought we'd have a, a, a slugfest. I didn't know it would be a 7-6 to six slugfest, but that's exactly what we got right now. And this, this is anybody's game for sure. That was a seven-yard pickup. But nothing on second down. Going to bring up a big third for the Wolfpack and maybe an even bigger third for this Irish defense. Pickup of one. So third and two from the 28. as this third quarter has flown by. So Stevenson, or Stevenson's like it's on the sideline, so it should be Trupp here. Yeah, it's Trupp. Trupp back in. With Ames. And Trupp will keep. And nothing. That's That might be the best job Aquinas has done, again, bottling him up right there. They did a really nice job there. Good surge up front. Like I said, I've been boasting about Greenbrier's offensive line, but you got to give credit to Aquinas' D-line that time. They did a really nice job. Uh, really no decision to be made here by Tony Kramer. The Wolfpack will have to kick it away. No, I think they're going for this. I think they're going to sneak this ball. Yeah, they are. From, from its own 29? No way. Yeah, I think they're either trying no to draw way. them off. They're going to draw them off. There's no way they snap this football. Wow, they do. I don't think he got it. And he didn't get it. Wow. Saw it two other times. But, but, I, but here's my question. I, I agree. They, but also, if you're going to do it, and I know they got it earlier with Stevens, but if you're going to do it, don't you do that with Trump, the bigger runner? I don't know if he's just not comfortable being under center because he's taken only shot. He's done pretty good not <laughs> yeah. under center, though. I, get, I do know what you're saying, though. And obviously they got it earlier, but, man, what I a – I'm stunned. A gutsy call by Greenbrier. But Aquinas now with the football 
first and 10 from the Greenbrier 29 and leading 7-6. Again, we've been talking about Greenbrier's offensive line that time on that series. Aquinas' defensive line really stepped up and, and, and dominated those last two plays. Big time, big time plays that time by them. So now Franklin back to work. Looks, end zone, wide open, touchdown. Unreal, unreal. Wow, Logan Brantley, junior receiver from right. 29 actually, yards out. Actually, I think it was Cates, 14, who got it. No, you're correct, A.B., it was Cates. And that's, just, and that's just busted coverage, John. I mean, they, they left him wide open, just busted coverage for sure. Christian Cates, who had 247 yards receiving coming into this game, and one of the bigger catches of the year for this Aquinas team. And just like that, Rhodes puts the Irish up 14 to six on the final play of this third quarter. 12 minutes to play, Aquinas by eight. Talking during the break about the call by Tony Kramer to go for it on fourth down for Greenbrier. And, you know, it, it, when you've lost 16 straight, we like the call to uh, try to instill some confidence in your, in your team. And now, even with the score, you're, it's still a one-score ball game. Well, and it, in that play, it's, all, it's, the, it's the Philadelphia Eagle play, the Jalen Hurts play where you run the quarterback and then you have the backs run up behind him and knock him. The, the, that, you, it's going to work most of the time. But – Aquinas made a great surge. They were ready for it. And I agree with Nathan. I think in that spot, when you put Stevens under center, they know what's coming. Sometimes it doesn't matter. You still can't stop it. But Aquinas, their defense stepped up that time. Give them credit. Now, Greenbrier's got to answer. And as Nathan pointed out during the break, it's only a one-possession game. If they score and go for two, we got a tie ball game. And they've got plenty of time, obviously, as we start the fourth. And as you watch that play out, Greenbrier with great field position to start this yeah. drive at the 46-yard line. Second kick out of bounds tonight for Aquinas. And here goes Ames. Ames across midfield. He'll be, well, I say he'll be. He's going to pull some white shirts with him inside the 40-yard line. Never did go to the turf. Well, and he did an outstanding job of holding on to the football because in those plays where you're fighting for extra yardage, and you'll see it happen here at the end of this play, the DBs come in and they're trying to rip the football loose. But watch Ames. Hold on to that football and not – I mean, they're all just trying to rip the football. They're not even trying to tackle him. And he did a great job of holding on to the football there. 18 yards on the carry, which brings us to our QBs by the quarter, brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yep. Franklin was 12 of 20 for 196 and two touchdowns through three quarters. Stevens uh, 16 of 11 for 44 yards, and Trump has added 81 yards on the ground. Banks on the carry for maybe one. Yeah, nowhere to go that time. Good job up front defensively by – Aquinas, and we're down at the bottom of the piles, the freshman, Jaden Worth, with another solid play. He was a little slow to get started tonight, but he has made his presence felt since. As a matter of fact, we got to start considering our McDonald's offense and the defensive mm -hmm. players of the game. Well, if the score holds, I think offense, we have a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And I think defensively, it's a, it's a two-man race right now. Uh, but I think, you know, you've got a couple of – got a, you got a freshman, you got another big kid up front that's done pretty well tonight for Aquinas also. But Greenbrier might have something to say about that. A lot of football What a left. fake. And look what at Trump. What a fake. Trump for 36 yards out. Touchdown, Greenbrier. What a fake by Cole Trump. He faked everybody in the stadium. I had an unfair advantage because I have a monitor right here, and I can see that he had the ball. Watch this. Oh, man, what a play. Fake the hand. There it is. He fakes the handoff. And wow. everybody, watch. Oh, my gosh, what a fake. Huge play for Greenbrier and Cole Trupp. The whole ballpark went left. He went right. And now Greenbrier, a two-point conversion away from starting this whole thing over. Frank so, Anderson, the defensive end, collapsed on the play, and, and that, that left Trupp wide open. So you're going Trupp or Stevens here for this two-point conversion? I think – 
I don't know. It's hard to argue with what Trump's done tonight. I, you know, I know as a whole, Stevens has been their main quarterback, but hard to argue with what Trump has done in this ball game. Aquinas will call its first time out of the RSA. Greenbrier, I should say, will call its first yeah. time out. Stephen gives you the, of the, the second half. Yeah, Stevens does give you the pass element, though. The run pass option. That, yeah. I mean, if you're putting in Trump in there, unless they've got something they've been hiding or holding. I, he, I would play them together. I don't put Trump at running back or something. I like that. Put them yeah. both in yeah, there. Yeah, put them both in there. I was at the Falcons game last Sunday, and we were talking about what, why not have Tyler Algier, Algier and, 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 and B. John Robinson yeah. in the oh. backfield at the same time. I tell you, the Falcons got a little something this year. I've, if Ritter can do something, you know, if Ritter can play well or, or at least play enough, they've got yeah. some weapons yeah. with Drake London and yeah. those two backs. I have no comment. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Don't want to jinx be, myself. That would be great to have them both back there because then the defense has yeah. no, no idea, idea what's going on. Yeah. So it's going to be Trupp. Trupp with Joshua Banks in the backfield, number three. And Trupp needs a block, doesn't get it, gets rid of it. Nobody home. And it will remain a two-point lead for Aquinas, 14 to 12. And that play was made by number 53 for Aquinas, stepping up and just getting through the line and holding on. That was Greg Doman. Big, big play from Doman, and he's only a sophomore. How many times have we said that tonight? Yeah, yeah. Wow, great play. Well, we've talked about the uh, success of the baseball program here. We talked about Chase Dolander. You don't have seven state championships without having a few more in the pipeline. How about Nick Sandlin, who graduated from Greenbrier High School, is now at the Cleveland Guardians 2018 Conference USA Pitcher of the Year at Southern Mississippi. And did you know this, A.B.? You know everything about stats, okay? He went with, to Cleveland in the 2018 yep. draft, second round. Yeah. Right now, currently, this season, he leads the American League. He's best in inherited runners not scoring. There's not an official stat well, for that, but – his last year at Southern Miss, he led the nation in ERA. He was second in the nation in strikeouts, and he missed about three starts. And went. he went – I think he went 10-0. Uh, and he missed about three starts that year. So, uh, unbelievable junior year. And, you know, Sandlin's another one. He wasn't even a pitcher, John. And then right before his junior year, he started toying around with throwing sidearm. And he, even to start his junior year, he was not one of their starting pitchers. They put him in in a random early game against Harlem. And I remember talking to the coaches, and they kind of were looking at each other going, I don't know how we can keep him out of the <laughs> as a starter. And <laughs> then he becomes a – D1 guy and a high draft pick, and he's a guy that I think a lot of teams would covet. I was surprised he didn't get traded by some of these teams really in the hunt because he's become a really nice uh, relief man for for, Cleveland, uh, for the uh, Guardians. Yeah, he's inherited 36 runners this year. Four have scored. That's incredible. So here come the Irish now from their own 20-yard line, still with the two-point lead, and now 10-31 left in the, in the ball game. Franklin needs a block, going to escape and throw, and that'll be a completion of seven yards. One thing that's underrated tonight is Franklin's ability to get out of trouble. That time he extended the play by scrambling and breaking a tackle. Now, are they saying that was incomplete? Kate says, I don't know if he went out of bounds and came back in to make yeah. that catch. But Franklin did a great job. Remember on the first touchdown pass, he was nearly sacked and broke a couple of tackles before throwing that ball. We'll see what they call here. Dominic Eubanks will let us know. Yep. A legal participation on the offense. Receiver went out of bounds and came back in and caught the pass. Good call, Nathan. Nathan on the spot as always. Watch, though, as Franklin eludes traffic. You know, easily could have been brought down there by Lou, and instead he thought he completed the pass, but it's going to come back. We got ourselves a... Tight one. Remember, our first game of the year was 14 to 12. Mm -hmm. Burke County knocking off Thompson, the defending state champions. And well, our first game of the year was 44. Oh, well, our first <laughs> weekend of the year. You're correct. You're correct. <laughs> but since then, it has been nail biters across the board on Game Night Live. By the way, we have the uh, name of the homecoming queen, Lily O'Neill. Congratulations. Lily O'Neill with a bright yellow dress. Mm -hmm. Got a big uh, round of, you know, the crowd kind of went nuts for her when she was called out. She was the winner. 
Franklin, nice pocket, throws, it is complete. And it's a big gain up near midfield. Big collision there at the end of the play. That was a, that's Josh Tyre. We have not called his, or Tyree, we've not called his name all night. And that was a beautiful play by Franklin. The patience of him to wait and let his receiver get open across the middle there, that is big time. And a beautiful throw, catch, run, and a big collision at the end of the play as well. And something we haven't said much tonight either, a senior, Josh Tyree. Another pickup of six. And That's that, Guerrero. Yeah, Buddy Rowe. I think these uh, Qantas receivers got the message from <laughs> Coach Leonard. <laughs> I think so. He probably, hey, the next guy that drops one is walking back to Aquinas. <laughs> yeah, there may not be any paint left. <laughs> it is a long way to Highland Avenue, boys. <laughs> they are in Greenbrier territory at the 46-yard line. That's what it's all about, though. 14-12, two teams battling it out. Chris Chappell looks like he's coming on a blitz here right at center. Now he's going to drop back in coverage. Too high and incomplete. Yeah, trying to go to Zaire Douglas. Hard to believe this is just the second time these two teams have ever met. I, when I saw that stat doing my notes for the game, I, I, was, I was floored. I didn't realize that either. Last and it was, was last the, year. Yeah, yeah last year. Aquinas Aquinas yep. <laughs> Go ahead, John. We read we the same thinking. thing. Hey, listen. We were, we were, <laughs> Thinking the same way there. <laughs> yeah, Aquinas won last year, doubling up 40 to 20. Ooh, dangerous over the middle. And incomplete, going to bring up big fourth down. Nolan Panzella looking around. If he had, if he had t turned and saw that ball, that might have been a pick. So a Ken Nugent one call, that's all moment for James Leonard. Well, I think at this spot on the field, I, I think it justifies going for it for sure. Fourth and two from the Greenbrier 46-yard line. You got an experienced quarterback. Your short passing game has been pretty solid. Franklin broken up. What a play. What a play by Ryan Claiborne. Claiborne has made a couple of nice plays defensively. So on fourth down, the pack hold. They'll take over. Down two with 8.56 left. Greenbrier takes over, down to 8.56 to play, starting from its own 46-yard line. And it's Stevens at quarterback, and down goes Stevens. You just can't take those, and that's Jaden Worth again, man. Yeah, we, he came in with six sacks entering this ball game. This and kid, you're high on him, and <laughs> I mean, just I mean, again, just a freshman. As, as, to quote Larry Munson, yeah, my God, a my freshman. God for, hey, it, by the time he's done, if he stays four years here, how many sacks is the kid going to have? Unreal. And he had 13 tackles for loss coming into the game in just his first four varsity games. Loss of seven. A lot of pressure on him now with both Michelson and Jackson off the team. There's a blitz. Again, more pressure. Ooh. And this is Christopher Jackson in on the pressure and the – yeah, Pat he's, continued to go in reverse. That's a great read by Jackson. He saw that. They came on a blitz up the middle, and it was a nice pickup by Stevens, and he went to dump it off to his back. But Jack, watch this. He had the blitz right at the middle. He read it perfectly, but Jackson, and he uh, miss, a missed block left Jackson wide open to hit the ball carrier there. So let's see what Tony Kramer has in the old playbook for third and 21. Well, just you can't do anything stupid here. Even if you don't get the first down, obviously you, you know, you're trying to win the football game, but you can't do anything crazy and lose it here. More pressure on Stevens this time. He, I believe it's complete. Aquinas says no, and Nathan says no as well, and now a flag. Comes There's a flag in. late. A very late flag. Now, it wouldn't be a first down even with the penalty, but Guy if it's on Aquinas. The intended receiver. Yeah, where it was at, it looks like pass interference, and you see Dominic Eubanks motion. Hey, 15, still fourth down. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, still fourth down. 
Well, the important thing is it's still fourth down. Yeah. So fourth and about six, call it seven from midfield. Yeah, should it be third still? You're right, should be third. Down. Yeah, he so, said fourth. It was third before. Because I, I was saying don't do anything dumb here on fourth down. You would have. I was thinking, did I just miss, misspeak there? So third and six from midfield. Much more manageable for the Wolf. Pack. Yeah, for sure. Big penalty, actually. And now Greenbrier will call a timeout. Yeah, this is the first drive all night. You feel like Greenbrier's kind of gotten away from what got him here. Yeah, yeah. And they got bailed out a little bit on the on the penalty there. If not, you would have been facing fourth and 21 and punting the ball away. That was a huge penalty. Aquinas had six penalties for 40 yards in the first half. Big finish here and a lot of finishes across the area. Football Friday night coming your way at 1135. Be sure to join us after tonight's game over on WJBF News Channel 6 at 1135 for football Friday night. We'll have a recap of this game plus games from all over Georgia and South Carolina and our 44 strong player of the week and our Powerade top five plays. And that reminds us we have our Powerade play of the game from this one coming up. Our Georgia Health Department hit of the game, our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game all coming your way on the post game show here. So third and six from midfield. Yeah, huge play. Stevens throws. Nobody home. So now what do you do? Well, they got a little pressure on him there. I think they're going to punt it. They're going to punt it away and hope their defense can get a stop. They only got one timeout left. You know what? I, I think if he had not gone for that first one, I think he probably goes for it here. I think that – is dictating this in my opinion and if it were it's fourth and six if it were fourth and three fourth and four maybe they are going to punt it away Greenbrier with just one time out good kick yeah good punt and buddy Rogerere can yeah, fly Rogerere on the return negates the punt oh what a return for Aquinas Huge play for the Irish. There is a flag after the play back at the 30-yard line. Number 52 for Greenbrier. Reese Rogier coming over and making the tackle at the end of the play. But, man, Buddy Rowe Guerrero showing you his wheels here. Hold it right there. Would have, been, would have been a 38-yard return. Nathan said would have been. I was going to say the, the, key, the key term there is woulda. And, again, you know, we talked about Jim Leonard upset with – the blocking and the Holding. drop passes in the first the half. Team. He's going to be really upset Take with all the penalties his team's piled up now as well. That's at least, you know, they're getting close to double figures if they're not already there. Well, they had seven for 45 yards in the first half. That's going to back them all the way up to the 25-yard line. That's about a 25-yard penalty. And then you had the... They dodged a bullet with the 15-yard penalty on defense just a moment ago. See what they can do here. Greenbrier's defense trying to get a stop, giving themselves a chance to get their first victory of the year. Now they're going to throw. A little surprising. Uh, no flags. Yeah, Guerrero felt he was held by the uh, Irish defender. fans. Irish fans wanted a flag. Nothing there. Second and ten. Yeah. Well, there is. Is there a flag? Yeah, there nope, was a flag. On an defense, 15 yard penalty. Go to play, be a first down. I did not see the flag. I didn't either. I just saw Eubanks motioning like there was a flag. So they did get the pass interference call. Yeah, Guerrero was certainly petitioning for it. And that'll move the Irish all the way up to the 43, or 30, I'm sorry, the 38 yard line. Yeah, this is tough where the Irish are trying to run the clock out, and they've had no ground game all all game long. There's only yeah. 28 yards all game. That's really wow. the difference in this year's Aquinas team and all those yeah. past teams. They've always – think of all the great running backs they've had over the years here. This is Cates. Oh, oh and another hit of the game nominee. Just absolutely leveled. That was Lou. Cameron Lou. I mean, how many hits of the game nominees are we going to have? That's – Five or six really good ones. Tough choice for our team in the truck. 
Yeah, this is where you miss. You could put Clark Jackson back there and yeah. let yep. him run this clock out. Milk it out, yep. You got to do it with the short passes, make them like runs. Mm -hmm. We know Kirby likes to talk about it being an extension of the <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah. There. Franklin on the there. keeper. He'll be a yard shy. So pretty big third down here. Third and one, under six minutes now. Well, if you're going to run it, it seems like tonight Franklin's been their best option running it. Yeah, they, they've only run it seven times, and he's running four of those. Nobody else has more than two yards. Irish in no hurry. Franklin, first down across midfield. Guerrero out of bounds at the 43. Some nifty moves there by Guerrero before he goes out of bounds. Or actually, that was Douglas. That was Douglas. Zaire Douglas. You the see, result is the same. Yeah, you see Guerrero and Douglas side by side. Look pretty similar. The numbers are five and six. Hard to keep up with sometimes. They're both very, very quick. So big first down for the Irish as we get down near five minutes to play. Well, and if you're Greenbrier, somebody on that defensive side has got to step up and make a play. And that's wide open. Yep. Back to the – cuts back toward midfield and gains even more to the 21-yard line. That was Douglas again. He's stepping up, making some plays on offense. That was just wide open. I mean, there was nobody within – eight, ten yards of him when he caught that football. Douglas with a pickup of 21. Great effort by Chris Chappell and a couple other Greenbrier guys try, trying to chase him down there. You're not going to say Greenbrier doesn't have a lot of heart and they don't give everything they got. They, they do that. But right now, they need to stop. Now don't forget this Aquinas team, right number 10 in the state, they're no, they're no joke. And Greenbrier giving them everything they have. Spins off one tackler, first down, then some inside the 10. First and goal, Aquinas. And that was Cates that time. Same play, different receiver. And Jim Franklin starting to pile up some passing yardage as well. Yeah, making a play for a McDonald's offensive player of the game. He's at 282 I have him for right now. 282. He's going for his second straight 300-yard game. Last week against Harlem, 309 through the air. He had four TDs r passing, two rushing tonight. He's got the two long touchdowns. 79 yards and 29 yards on the two scores. Franklin, Cates, nothing. Yeah, this, Lou. Yeah, this time Greenbrier was ready. Same play, they tried to run it three straight times and Lou that time was ready. Aquinas, though, pretty happy. This clock's running. They're in striking distance to score again. A, a touchdown, you would think, if they could get the extra point, probably puts this one away, barring a miracle. But if Greenbrier can hold them to a field goal, they're in business still. Yeah, big couple of downs coming up right here. Kate's in motion. Franklin. Avoids one tackler. He's going to run for it. Franklin to the pylon. He got it. Touchdown. Well, he's thrown two, and now he's run one. Jim Franklin with his second rushing touchdown of the year may have just put this thing away for Aquinas. Well, the Aquinas fans sure think so. They're pretty happy over there. This is a big extra point because this makes it a two-possession game if they're able to knock it in. Uh -oh. oh, bad snap. Aquinas will throw for it, and it is picked off. The conversion is no good, and A.B., to That's your point. We have a one-score game with 3.29 left to play. That was Vicari Guyton 
with the interception. You, know, you got to give it a, a pretty good effort there by Jackson to try and make something out of nothing. Or actually, I think that might have been 15, not 19. That was Tyree. And uh, tried to make something out of nothing there. Yeah, they were few beginning to pack their stuff up to leave, and they turned around yeah. and set right back down. Nobody's leaving this place right now. Let's go ahead and get you the answer to our Brand Smart USA trivia question. Talked about Chase Dolander, the great Greenbrier pitcher, the top pick by the Colorado Rockies this season in the year this year in the MLB draft. Which future Braves postseason hero was Colorado's number one draft pick in 2009, A.B.? I've got an unfair advantage on some of these, John. As a sports memorabilia collector, I just have to think of which rookie year and the only person it can be, because, you know, you throw at Matt Ol The Braves have very few first-round picks that were on another team first. Matt Olson or, mm -hmm. you know, Jorge Soler wasn't drafted. He was kind of a hero. It is Tyler Matzik, the uh, left-handed pitcher, who was a great college pitcher and uh, was an All-American. And actually, he was a bust for a long time as a pitcher but obviously had some great moments there with the Braves late in his career. You, uh, you seem very confident. We'll get you the answer right after this kickoff. And it's a good return by Nolan Panzella up across the 35-yard line. The answer is? It's got to be him, right? Tyler Matzik. There you go. What a postseason he had in 2001. We'll never forget that. Game six, two perfect innings against the Dodgers. Came in with four Ks yeah. and propelled the Braves to the World Series, which, of course, they won in six games over the Houston Astros. has been hurt this year, but uh, signed for another couple of years, so he should be back next season. And you figure, 2009 doesn't seem that long ago. I mean, that's 14 years yeah. ago. Yeah, he yeah, he was a he was a big-time starting pitcher in college. And he had again, the yips. He yeah. got the yips yep. and couldn't sure throw did. a strike yep. and had to go uh, get, a, get, a, get things right and, and uh, has. And what a favorite he is among Braves fans, yours truly included. So here come the pack. And it's picked off. That should seal the deal. Aquinas. That's Jackson. That might see. Uh, yeah, he was battling Jaden Worth maybe for deep, defensive player of the game. That might have given it to him. T.J. Jackson. Worth was outstanding, but so was Jackson. And then this play, him dropping back in coverage and getting the pick that just might lock it up for Aquinas. Big play by Jackson. Aquinas will take over it. Roughly midfield with 3.09 to play. Irish with two timeouts, Wolfpack with one. Yeah, I, yeah, I knew AB had that question right because he has a tell. I know he likes to play cards, but when he starts <laughs> doing the rock and Leo Mazzoni confident rock, <laughs> you know he's got it. Kier's acting like I never get questions right in my ear. <laughs> I think you've only gotten one wrong. I was been, I've been good this year, yeah. Kira. Come he, on. You've missed a couple. You've missed a couple. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did miss that one, which is, which is embarrassing. <laughs> missed the Augusta National that question. Was, yeah. and, and last week was brutal. You missed that one, too. But yeah, that, last that week was tough. tough. Yeah, that was a tough one, man. <laughs> that is true. You have oh, missed, man, I missed oh, a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You have. Yeah. Kira's right. right. Kira's yeah. bringing out receipts on you. <laughs> I'm 50. We've had six games, so I'm only 50-50. <laughs> track down here, A.B. Uh, I got all these people fooled, and they're bringing this newcomer. <laughs> <laughs> she knows all. She's already got me figured out. I promise I didn't pass that stuff. <laughs> That is true. So, so I'm three. Is that right? Three and six, or three and three? Three and three. All yeah. right. Well, last week's though, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon was tough. Whoa. Unless you're a Thompson, hardcore Thompson fan, which there are a lot of. First and a whole bunch for the Irish, and passes intended for Cates. Another flag down. Call. I thought I saw a flag. It was a sock. <laughs> so it is complete to the 45-yard line. So here come the Irish. Second and 12 from the Greenbrier 45. Trying to salt this one away. 217 left. As Aquinas team will move on to for another huge test next week. Both of these teams will start region play a week from now. Aquinas will face. Number 10, Lincoln County, as they keep it on the ground and burn more clock. And we'll see if Tony Gramer burns his final timeout. He will not. Well, 
again, not looking great for Greenbrier here, but you got to give them a lot of credit. They, they came in against a top-ranked team and a team that uh, beat them by 20 last year. They've given them everything they can handle. I mean, they had the ball down 14 to 12, but and then let Aquinas get that last score. Still not over, though. There was a flag on that play. He'll back the Irish up to the 46-yard line. Greenbrier will hit the road next week to open its region play at Statesboro. Well, that's a brutal region. I was yeah, going to say, that they're no in joke. a tough region this year. I'm sure they were not pleased when they saw that region realignment, which actually they're going to be redone next yep. year, this offseason as well. So. Yeah, they're going to play two, the number one and current number three ranked team in the state in 5A in their region. Mm. Well, they have given it everything they have tonight against a very good Aquinas squad. This is Cates, and he'll stay inbounds and keep the clock moving. But, again, this tells me just how – little confidence coach uh, Leonard has in the running game he's using these little passes for his runs to run the clock he's not even handing the ball off or running his QB he's letting him just toss it complete these easy catches and it's also allowing him Franklin to pile up some yardage he's approaching 300 yards passing for the second straight game well and they had almost four times as many passing yards as rushing yards in the first half and it's continued here in the second Inside the final minute now. Trying to wrap up our picks for McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Yeah. And I think you got to give credit to the to, to Greenbrier's crowd here. I mean, yeah. packed house night. I know it's homecoming. Students came out. Yeah. This does not look like a team that hasn't won a game in almost no, two years. No, like, if you go doesn't. places like that, it'd be a good. As a matter of fact, my daughter doesn't come to very many games when we it just happened to be we're here tonight and she goes to school here. So we, we came to the game and we got here, you know, 640 or so. And she's like, why are all these people here so early? <laughs> <laughs> great turnout. They always have a great turnout here in the student section of Greenbrier. Gives a chance to thank our crew that set us up and does such a great job every week to bring you game night live every Friday night including our replay coordinator, Ben Price, our director, Kyle Thomas, on graphics and directing Josh Recor on audio, Jeff Singleton on cameras for us tonight, Katron Hugie, Kat Kingry, Jake Arnold, and Gary Nipple working the sidelines for us tonight, Andrew Robertson. Our red cap is Kevin Chang. Live truck operator, Philip Scott, master control, keeping us on the air back at WJBF News Channel 6 is Jarrett Ledger. Our production manager is Lauren Fitzgerald, and our production timer for the second straight week. Ashlyn Williams. Inside the final 40. Franklin will keep. Just yeah. wants to stay in bounds. I don't, he, I don't know if he did or didn't. Yeah, he did. Okay. He faked as if he was going to throw that ball, and then it looked like he was heading for the sidelines. Yeah. I was wondering what he was doing there. And they actually stopped the clock because of the – no, he didn't get a first down. They stopped the clock. They said he went – Timeout, oh, time Greenbrier. Out. Yeah, I was Greenbrier say. will burn its final timeout with 28.4 seconds yeah. left. Well, we keep saying, you know, Greenbrier fought hard and all that, but you got to give Aquinas credit, too. They, When their defense needed to make a couple of plays, they got their stops, and, and that allowed them to win this football game. We've seen crazier things happen. I mean, it's fourth down here. I assume they're not going to punt and risk a blocked punt here. It's going to yeah. be some kind of uh, probably quick pass, I'd imagine. Gives us a chance to remind you we, next week, will be in Evans just down the road here. Lakeside Panthers and the Evans Knights who will be playing their second region game against each other. Uh, region 2-6A showdown. Of course, Barrett Davis, Evans head coach, is our border bowl coach for Team Georgia this year. And we'll get our a look at uh, one of the bigger college prospects in our area, Mason Short, the massive offensive lineman for Evans High School, committed to the University of Alabama. That's one week from tonight. Lakeside at Evans on Game Night Live. Looking forward to that one. It's been a few years since we've done that rivalry. Yeah. Yeah, it sure has. Saw the Panthers earlier this year against North Augusta. It's a much improved lakeside squad. Maybe even knows both sides of that rifle. Yeah, I do. That's Spent true. time at both schools. So on fourth and five, Aquinas. First down ends it. And now the Irish will take time out. Coach Leonard was seeing if he could get a free five yards there. Well, one of these teams, fan base. Looks like they're going to punt it. They're taking Franklin off the field and Rhodes. 
those are their two quarterbacks, so they're going to punt it. Ooh. Even the snaps are risky, so that's a – I almost like them throwing that little dump pass and letting them run it, yeah. you know. I punt. 28 seconds, yeah. no timeouts. I, I just don't know that I punt the f football. I'm maybe, I, maybe one of those quick screens. Even if it's incomplete, if, if it's it not going to be intercepted. If, if it were a field goal game, I punt it. But they've got to score either way. They're going to have to go – whether they go 60 yards or, you know, 85 or 90 yards, they've got to, they've got to score a touchdown and get a two. I probably – Run it. I would punt it for sure if they were within a field goal. Guess who James Leonard agrees with? <laughs> he agrees with you for sure. <laughs> hey, that's why we're sitting here, and he's one of the you know he's won ninety games in you know what ten years. And a good kick. Greenbrier will take over at the eleven yard line. Got to go eighty nine yards in seventeen point eight seconds with no timeouts. No timeouts. Well. Crazier things have happened, but very few times. Not, not many. <laughs> Miracle at the Meadowlands, Herm <laughs> Edwards against the, uh, uh, do you remember the quarterback? Music the City, Giants. the Music City Miracle, uh, quarterback for the Giants. When uh, it, During the uh, Miracle in the Meadowlands when he dropped it and Herm Edwards ran it back for a score. I do not. They were just trying to run the play to melt the clock, and instead of you know him taking a knee, they handed it off and botched the handoff. It was Joe Pizarczyk. Wow. If we're gonna if we're gonna break a long time losing streak, let's do it in fantastic fashion. Well, we're gonna have to <laughs> if we're gonna do it. <laughs> so neither team has a timeout. Seventeen point eight ticks left, and Greenbrier will be trying to get to the sidelines. And instead, that is going to be a game ceiling pick by Zaire Douglas, Aquinas. Comes into Greenbrier and the Irish are going to leave a winner. And now the Greenbrier faithful who have been so loud all night long are starting to slowly make their way to the exits and the celebration begins on the Aquinas sideline. Greenbrier can't stop the clock, so one knee and we'll do it. And Franklin will seal the deal. And handshakes all around. Irish eyes are smiling on this Friday night. Aquinas, a winner, final score, 20. To 12. Well, you know, you got to give Aquinas credit. I mean, when they needed to make those defensive stops after not really playing well defensively, when they needed the stops, they came up with some big plays. That was stopping them on fourth down a couple of times. That was getting the interception when they needed. And, of course, Jim Franklin was outstanding orchestrating this offense, especially considering they're pretty one-dimensional. They don't run it. Uh, it's him throwing the football all around. And, you know, the, the offensive line did enough in pass blocking to give him time to throw. And, of course, his receivers in the second half didn't have the drops they had in the first half. So, you know, all around Aquinas, you know, goes to 4-1 and one and earned a hard-fought victory tonight. Powerade play of the game, Georgia Health Department hit of the game, and the McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game are all coming your way in the post-game show. As Aquinas moves to 4-1 and one on the season, Greenbrier drops to 0-5. Oh and, and Aquinas leads the all-time series, which we said a very short-lived all-time series, now 2 to nothing over the Wolfpack. All right, we'll take a quick break, come back with all of our post-game superlatives and hand out some hardware. 20-12, to 12, Aquinas over Greenbrier. I'm on the field with Coach Leonard. Coach, I know it wasn't a pretty game, but what are you pleased with from your team tonight? Uh, I mean, we won, but there's a lot of miscommunication on offense. That's going to be embarrassing in the region if we can't fix that. Got to tackle better on defense. I mean, everybody in the region is running the ball. We got to get more possessions. Um, a lot of work to do. That last interception sealed the deal. Can you talk a little bit about the defensive performance tonight? 
Yeah, I mean, I thought they bowed their neck. You know, we, we gave up a long possession every time they're out there. But at the end of the day, they only had 12 points. Um, Zaire Douglas stepped up huge into the game. TJ Jackson, you know, it's never easy to lose your two senior inside linebackers like we did early. But so proud of guys like Jaden Worth stepping up, Boogie Douglas, uh, TJ, Frank Anderson, Copeland Thurman. So Chris Jackson had a great game. So proud of those guys stepping up. You told me that this is the year of adjustments. What adjustments can we expect to see next week when you take on Lincoln County here? Uh, time. Yeah, we, we, we can't punt, and we got to get people on the ground on defense. Thank you so much for the time, Coach. Congrats on the win. Guys, we'll send it up to you. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> what did you like tonight? Uh, <laughs> that might be the be best quote. <laughs> that might beat Lazat's quote right there. What didn't even say anything. Oh, fantastic. Love it, Coach Leonard. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, All right. Kira's going to get set up for our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. It'll give us some time to bring you the power, or the Georgia, I'm sorry, health department hit of the game. Well, this was a big one early Oof. on. Oh, my goodness. Number 26, Jaden Hill, low in the boom. But, hey, credit to the receiver hanging on to the football there. All right. And that brings us to our power aid play of the game. i got a feeling I know what this one is. Yeah, this was uh, – look at this right here. Almost Miss, got in there. One misses. Almost got in there. Two misses. And instead, it's a 79-yard touchdown to Jack Rhodes. Rhodes looked almost surprised that there was nobody else there. Nothing but green. There it is. In front of him. And that play, you could argue, made the difference in this ball game. All right, back down to Kira for our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. All right, thanks guys. Kira Goldstein down here on the sidelines with our offensive and defensive players of the game. I'm going to start with Jim Franklin, 297 yards, two touchdowns passing, also added 56 rush yards and a rushing TD. What was working so well for you tonight on offense? You know, I think 11 guys were just playing their hearts out. And, um, I think everybody did their job, and I think that's what really gave us the win. How did your teammates step up for you to allow you to shine tonight in this game? Everyone just did their job, you know. Always says, do your job and we'll succeed. And I think that's what we did. Thank you so much. That right there, that award is yours. Congratulations, well earned. I'm going to move over to our defensive player of the game, TJ. All right, you had an interception that almost sealed the deal. It pretty much did seal the deal in the fourth quarter. What was working so well for you and the defense tonight? Uh, playing together as a team and remembering that we're playing for the players that have fallen down and we're just here to compete and show the CSRA that we're still here. No matter you mentioned the players that have fallen down. It's been a season of adjustments for you. How is your team overcoming those obstacles and battling as one unit? You know, every year we have some obstacle adversity and we just try to overcome it and just move past and next play, next thing. Always do next step forward, you know. Well, congratulations. That right there is yours. Very well earned. Aquinas gets the win and we're going to send it back up to John and A.B. in the booth. Yeah, Kira, thanks, and congratulations to uh, TJ and Jim. And, and, and kudos to TJ for mentioning the two players. The, yeah. Aquinas, again, we can't mention it enough, without two of their best players here tonight in Clark Jackson and Wes Michelson and still pull off the win 20-12. to 12. We still have one more order of business to get to you, and that's your Q QBs by the quarter. Oh, I thought you were about to sing. We can you want <laughs> Tell you what, after the game, we will sing Presented happy by birthday to Nathan. I'm just messing with you. We don't want to lose sponsors. We want to gain sponsors. Uh, yeah, so uh, I know Akira just kind of ran through. I'll, real quickly, I'll, I'll kind of repeat what Franklin did tonight. Had a really great game. Um, definitely was uh, 21 32 for 297, two touchdowns. Uh, and then he added uh, another uh, 56 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown. Uh, for Greenbrier, uh, definitely Stevens was 5 of 13 for 43 yards, had the two interceptions late where he was trying to bring them back. Uh, and then Trump was really good tonight on the ground. He added 117 yards on 18 carries and a ru long rushing touchdown. So Greenbrier, I mean, Aquinas, I should say, with a big win here heading into region play. They improved to 4-1. and one. Greenbrier falls to 0-5. Oh A.B., final thoughts on this one? Well, I think, you know, Coach Leonard was right. I think his defense bent, but they showed some resilience when they needed to, and they stepped up and made some plays, especially considering probably their two best defensive players, maybe the two best in the area are out. Uh, yeah, they stepped up when they had to defensively. And then they, it was impressive that they were able to throw for that much again because they're pretty one-dimensional right now offensively. But it worked for them. They turned these short passes into kind of their running game, and they were able to do, do you know, do enough to get the victory and uh, get out of here four and one. Yeah, Aquinas fans, you can catch the encore presentation of Game Night Live coming up this Sunday at high noon on WJBF News Channel Six and highlights and. 
reaction from this game coming up for you on Football Friday Night. Brendan Robertson and Graham Lee are back at Television Park getting ready for that at 11.35 over on WJBF. One week from tonight, we will be at Blanchard Stadium in Evans when the Knights host Lakeside in a big Region 2 6A showdown and a big rivalry game as well. So we'll see you there for one week from tonight for Kira Goldstein down on the field. The birthday boy, our statistician Nathan Edwards, AB up here in the booth. John Hart saying so long from Greenbrier. We will see you one week from tonight from Evans.